Welcome to the Clear Shots Podcast with Seth Skinner and Jake Jones. Hey guys, it's Seth. Today you're listening to episode 74 of Clear Shots. Clear Shots is sponsored by Anchor. When I was trying to start this podcast, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show on to all the apps everyone listens on? How do I make money from the podcast? And the answer to all those questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free. It's ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. This means you can get paid to podcast right away. Their mobile app is super cool. You can record, edit, and post your podcast directly from your phone. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast and make money doing it, go to A-N-C-H-O-R dot F-M slash S-T-A-R-T. That's anchor.fm slash start. Don't give them clear shot. 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 Action. So, welcome to the Clear Shots <laughs> Podcast. Hey. Um, my name is Seth Skinner. And I am Jake Jones. And uh, mm-hmm. we just got back from Dunkin' Donuts. God praise Dunkin' Donuts, man. God yeah. damn. That's the, that's the hardest... That's probably the hardest <laughs> I've ever had to not laugh in public in my entire life. <laughs> it's the hardest I've ever had to not laugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, like... The I think the amount of willpower I, I used to suppress that laughter just now, just well, fifteen minutes ago, it was impeccable. <laughs> let me let me just get that out there. What's a good color for Dunkin' Donuts? Orange. I don't know if I have an orange. Can you, you should have with orange? RGB. You have fates. <laughs> no, RGB is red, green, and blue only. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. I can't find an orange. Just make an orange. I can't make it. I'm not spending the time to make an orange. I'll make an orange. You tell the story. I'll make an orange. <laughs> make an orange. Uh, you know, that's good enough. Purple is pretty much. Uh, there it is. I mean, that's like. Oh, that's pink over there. It's red over there. I don't know. We'll call it neutral. We'll throw in the towel this time. No, give me the controller. You're not going to get it. I can get it. You can't get it. Let me get it. There's no orange. You don't even let me try. There's orange. No, that's red. Why is it, um, why is part of my microphone more sensitive? <clears throat> what are you talking about? Give it's me the, over there. Give me the remote. You never you're, let me do anything. You don't, you're not, you're not going to be able to do it. There's only a certain number of colors. You, so anyway, we went to Dunkin' Donuts and, uh, I mean, first of all, I don't know how, but you're not going to get, there's no orange. You can't do it. There's three colors. So we went to Dung and Donuts, and uh, we go through the drive-thru. We're, like, sitting there for a good amount of time, right? And, you know, we finally get up there. We place the order. Beautiful order. Great order, actually. <laughs> it was a good order. And, uh, you know, they, they do their thing. They make the coffees. And after we place the order, we're heading to the window, and I realize that my wallet isn't my... In, isn't in my pocket. Go what fuck yourself, that? dude. That's orange. No, it's not. It's red and green. Oh, my God. See what I mean? It's red and green. What's that? <clears throat> Why right there? Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. So I realized my wallet wasn't in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason, I always have it in my pocket. And except for when it's not in my pocket, of mm-hmm. course. Uh, and so I debated just leaving. And then just making coffee here. And then I was like, fuck it. I'll just get to the window. I'll tell the guy I don't have my wallet. I'll be back in a minute. So we go back. We come back, get the wallet, and we go back out to Dunkin' Donuts. And then we go inside because we don't want to wait in the fucking drive-thru again. And we <laughs> we go to the counter. And we're like, yeah, uh, we just placed an order through the drive-thru. I forgot my wallet. No, th- this is it. the most underrated part. <clears throat> was we tell the lady like, "Hey, uh, 
we ordered two coffees to the drive through but we had to hold them. We didn't have the wallet. And she goes, oh, yeah. were you the two cookies and cream culottes? Which no. means that somebody else somebody had also <laughs> left their wallet. <laughs> somebody else knows the trick, too. <laughs> like, I didn't pick up on that the first time. But go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, because I almost just said yes, because, like, who? how else would they just be holding on to one? Like, why? what are the chances they're just holding on to another one? Yeah. I didn't even really listen to what she was saying. And then I was like, cookies and cream? No, 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 no. And so she's like, she goes and gets them. She hands them to us, and she's like, okay, have a good, have a good day, guys. And then walks away. And I have my card out. Like, I'm, like, <laughs> ready to fucking swipe it. And she doesn't say anything nope. about the price or anything. So that was it. We walked away. <laughs> we Well, first you said, where are the straws? Yeah, because I couldn't said, find the straws. She said, were... they're right over there. Have a nice day. And, and then, we're getting the straws. And like it sunk in to the both of us at the <clears> same time. <laughs> where, where I'm getting the straw. And stop it. <laughs> you looked at me and just like, oh, my God, we got to leave. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, what? And I look, you still have your card in your hand. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. I like tucked it behind my wallet. Like I tried to like make it inconspicuous. Yeah. And we're leaving. Luckily and- the card's the same color as my wallet. It's camouflage. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, we're in the car and I'm like, we gotta go. We gotta go. Yeah, we gotta go. Floor, we gotta floor. go. And as soon as we peeled out, I, we fucking started dying laughing. <laughs> like, I don't know. Maybe it's the, yeah, it's like a, you had to be there moment. But that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, they're not supposed to give you free coffee. No, no they're, that's the exact opposite. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the yeah, exact opposite of their agenda. Yeah. <laughs> oh but my that God. is the trick. <clears throat> so, like, if you guys want to get free coffee, all you have to do is go through the drive through forget your wallet, and then come back inside the dining room area. And then they give you it for free, and then you drive away. That was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, free coffee. It's funny because... Like, at a certain point, they should just be giving free coffee anyway to people who spend a certain amount of money there. Dude, I see people go up there and they use their phone or whatever to, like, scan their, like, rewards thing. Yeah. It's like, those people have to be getting something, right? Because they wouldn't be using that if they're not getting any rewards for it. It's fucking, I don't know, dude. People just fucking literally, like, they have, there's such brand loyalty nowadays. <laughs> Like brand loyalty exists. Well, it's always been like that. Yeah, I mean, but it's super had, hard. What's up, now. dude? Yeah, <laughs> just walks in. <laughs> what's up, man? He wants to say hi. <clears throat> now I'm going to my grandma's tonight. I I already told Sam that I'll probably be heading out afterward, but I'll let you guys know for sure. But I'm be my I'm gonna be at my grandma's till like ten or so. He's gonna be hanging. Sam, I guess. Right. Sam, I am. I, I, <laughs> yeah, <green egg. laughs> Thanks, man. Cast on. Cast on. <laughs> that should be the uh, the catchphrase now. Cast on, dude. Cast on. Yeah. It's like Gaston. What's that from? Beauty and the Beast? Is that the guy mm, from Beauty? Yep. He was a badass. That dude was a badass. He was like full of himself and shit. <clears throat> But anyway, yeah, brand loyalty. Yeah, There's, well, dude, it's like really obvious with like Apple and Android and shit. I was gonna say it's the most obvious with people that drive trucks. Really? What dude, do you mean by oh, all oh, by like as far as actual like uh, manufacturer goes? Yeah, 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 dude. That's true. People and then like you have, swear like, by you have, their fucking Dodge. <laughs> yeah, you have Calvin. You have Calvin pissing on the yeah, Dodge yeah. horns. Or the Chevy logo, the yeah. cross. What is that logo supposed to be? I never understood that. It's just a cross. It's like a plus sign. I actually really like the Chevy logo. Now that I think about it's it, it's sharp. You know, mm-hmm. isn't Dodge just uh, two lines? Yeah. Well, kind of just. It's got a cool font. It's got the ESPN looking font, right? Mm. I noticed the other day that UFC and ESPN have, like, the same font. Like, <laughs> when UFC was coming up with their shit, they were just like, what does ESPN do? Because we like them. They're big, right? <laughs> Let's just do that. We should do a clear shots thing, and we'll just put the ESPN font, and then we'll get big. You know? That's, That's the, the move. That is the key to, <clears throat> to getting big. 
Um, it's like I would say I would say the most annoying brand loyalty comes with like. Uh, but I don't get it for cars. Like I really don't get that at all. Like what? I mean, I get it. Like you want your with well, the thing you have, you basically want to be the best thing, and you want to defend what your purchase basically is what it yeah. is. But I always felt like I like iPhone users like they they there's no chance they ever leave iPhones like it's weird like most of them just want to stick with iPhone just because it's what they know basically well you have to I'm t- and in a way they make it so you have to because yeah. <clears throat> I had an iPhone for years I had only iPhone well I had, a, I had I mean now it's like you can transition that shit like well yeah I was easily. gonna say like, like the only reason I app. switched was because with AT and T they basically made it so. You're able to switch all your shit over. Right. With iTunes, they don't let you, but AT and T's basically like, no. I think you can do it with T Mobile too, like the mobile transfer, where you like get your you get both phones, you set them up on Bluetooth, and yeah. it transfers everything. Well, everything um, over. yeah, not some of them aren't even Bluetooth now. It's like there's that uh, I don't know what NFC it's called, NFC reader or something. Yeah, where if your phone's like in close proximity, it can transfer certain data and files it's way and faster. That's weird. How is that faster? That makes no sense. Uh, if I it's recall, have it's like a it's a it's the, a chip or something. Yeah, because yeah. that's how. Um, oh my god! What the hell? That's how like uh, they have uh, debit cards with the chips in them now. Yeah, yeah. You know what so I mean? It's similar to that, basically. <clears throat> that shit's wicked annoying because well, people um, pay with their phones too, like Google Pay. And yeah, like that's and that's the same Apple chip. Pay. It's the NFC chip. If I recall, yeah, I, I could is. be wrong. It is because if you turn it, I turn it off on my phone, and it was like asking me. It was like saying, like, if you turn this off, blah blah blah, payments, blah Google blah blah. Wallet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I don't use that shit anyway. I think it's like, crazy how cheap and efficient fingerprint scanners are nowadays. Because every phone and every digital media has a fingerprint scanner. Right. And I'm waiting for the day where debit cards and credit cards have fingerprint scanners on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I guess is just your phone really right at a certain point it's just gonna be your phone anyway like yeah. that's what they could do but i don't know you wonder how secure that is it's like even the even your credit card isn't secure really people have things that they can shoot like from a distance that can pick up your number and card information and shit yeah that's why they make wallets with that <clears throat> like uh yeah that, yeah the, that, like the like rich uh, wallet like yeah, those, yeah. those solid like they got like a I can't think of what it is. It's got like some sort of protection. Lead. On it. <laughs> lead. Like a lead alloy. Your yeah. wallet weighs like eight pounds. <laughs> the thing I don't like about those is that you got to carry them in your front pocket because you can't sit on them. Because like they're, they're, they're fucking steel. Basically. See, well, when I sit down, I take everything out of my pockets anyway. Oh. It usually, That's too much work. Dude. What the lighter, fuck? Which, I wouldn't even sit down at that point. It's too much work to sit down. Well, it's a, it's a fun out. way to flex on people that don't have a Zippo <laughs> or their yeah. own keys. You're like, check this out. I got a key. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point when, like, I got a key and I was like, this is cool. I'm finally cool. Right? Like, when you first get a house key, you kind of like, feel like you're cool because you got keys. Yeah, like you're it. granted access. Yeah, yeah. Like, 24-7 access. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Because like, if you have a key, who's going to stop you? Yeah. If you have a key, who's going to stop you? <laughs> no one yeah because yeah, you have like, the key right <laughs> you are the key i think keys are a crazy invention because they've been around for yeah they've ever. never gone out of style they've right? never gone out of style and there's just little metal things with ridges yeah and different ridges on every one yeah <laughs> how are they not running out of numbers of ridges you know how are they I mean? not running out of keys? Like, I bet if you went to, if you took your house key, like, somewhere in the world, it would work <laughs> just because it's close enough, like, to some other fucking key. Because <laughs> they have to overlap, right, at some point. I don't even know how they work, really. There's pins in the lock, right? Yeah. So it basically pushes those pins up to a certain location, and then once they're all leveled, it opens it. So the key's basically just based on where the pins are in the lock. I think being a locksmith would be fun as fuck, honestly. Yeah. Where do you go to become a locksmith? I want to <clears> learn <throat> to pick locks with a fucking, like, uh, 
uh, like a hair clip or some shit. <laughs> like, yeah, like in Fallout, you just take, yeah. you take like a screwdriver and a bobby pin and you just yeah, pick yeah. every lock in the world. Yeah, but it, I mean, it's like, if it was that easy. You just you just turn it until it starts shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that in uh, in Fallout you can lock pick like fucking hydraulic doors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> every every door, no matter how recent it is, has the same like exact tumbler same lock. lock. <laughs> and it always rotates to the side. Yeah, that's <clears throat> weird. I don't know why they do that. <laughs> Splinter Cell had a cool lock pick mechanic. Some of them are okay. I always just I don't know. I was playing Bioshock recently, and I was like, "Oh god, the hacking is like." I remember how much time that's with the spent tubes, the right? Hacking. Yeah, that in the first one, yeah, that one's frustrating. In the second hell. one, they changed it to like the gun, like you had the auto hack gun. You could shoot it at something, and then you'd have to like stop the bar as it goes across. Oh yeah, in like the blue or whatever. Which that was faster. It was way faster, but the, there was some. It was kind of fun, like. I don't know. The tube thing was kind of fun until you do it seven million times in the game. Because mm-hmm. I, when I play the game, I hack everything. Because I don't want to like if I have to backtrack through an area, I don't want to have to deal with like a security camera or a turret shooting at me again. It's like I want all that to be working for me because that shit will shoot enemies. Yeah, and I think if the enemies <laughs> trigger like the. Uh, security cameras those bots come after them too so it's like you, there's no reason like to not have those things working for dude, you. dude the noise people. like when you're playing bioshock and it's yep when it's like one in the morning yeah and all of a sudden you just hear that and it's not you that's when it's scarier when it's like a splicer <laughs> yeah. setting off the alarm yeah like around the fucking corner fuck mm. that shit dude yeah that game it's almost got a like a horror feel in a way. Um, it's, it's definitely really, a survival horror esque yeah. game. Yeah, especially not, on like hard really mode. Like super scary though. There's just um, parts that like startle you and shit. You know. Yeah. There's creepy parts. Like there's definitely like, and like scenery wise, it's like really grim and the aesthetic is, is yeah. the thing that gets you. Because yeah. like, especially like the Sander Cohen parts where you're like in that's the, the photographer theater. guy, right? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, like, that's what bugged me with Infinite, was that in Infinite, you're in the clouds, and it's, there's birds, and there's sunlight, and, like, it should have been, you know, unnerving, but it really wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a totally different feel. I like that they took that approach, though, and they changed it up, since they had already done those two, but... I don't know. It also felt different, like, mechanically. You could sprint and all that stuff. Yeah, Infinite was basically just, like, uh... It it felt like it was made well, for sure. Uh, yeah. I didn't feel like the mechanics were bad or anything like that. It just didn't... It didn't feel as... I, I didn't like it as much. I guess, long story short. I didn't like Infinite as much. Definitely not as much as the first one. Right, I think the first one's the best one, for sure. But and the second one just made you feel so cool because you were playing as a big daddy the whole time. Right. I sort of like the scale of Infinite too, though. I, well, the story I think really is what brought it together. But was two the one that had the big sisters? Uh, yes. That one was crazy. Yeah, that one's cool. I don't remember the ending of that one though. Um. Well. I remember the final boss and shit like that. I don't really remember much about the story. The final boss was like you fight a person and then they have like three little s- or big sisters with them, right? Yeah, you're in like one room and it's just kind of you basically just save your entire uh, all of your ammo throughout the entire game for the final boss. Yeah, dude, that's one game where like I save ammo for so long, like throughout the entire mission, and then I never end up using it. Like, it's that sort of, like, I don't know. I feel like I do that in Destiny as well. Like, I I get heavy ammo, and I never end up using it, because I'm like, well, I need to use it for something bigger. I feel like it, that that's a thing you could do in D&D, too, is, like, not using spell slots and things like that. That's what I do. Like, you just kind of hold them until something big happens, and then it's like, 
when something big happens, you're like, well, what if something bigger happens after this? <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this. It's like, and then you just <laughs> never use any of it. Can't, I can't remember what they call that, but there's definitely a term for that. It's like hoarding, basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's crazy. I fucking I, do it so much, like yeah. just unconsciously. <clears throat> I mean, I guess in certain games, it's like if you've played it before, you know what the boss is and shit and when you can use it, but... I fucking... I watched uh, the Home Run Derby yesterday, and it was fucking insane, because... Uh, Vlad, Vlad Guerrero, Guerrero Jr.? Jr.? Yeah. That's was, all I saw. Yeah, he was hitting it out of his mind. That kid swings so hard. It, he was gassed in the final round. That's the Did thing. he win? No, he didn't. Who won? I don't even fucking remember, because everybody was focused on Vlad. <clears throat> so I fell asleep wicked early last night. I played... Um, well, I worked until, like, 7. I got DP Doe, which was amazing. I watched the Ron Paul Champagne, or Robert Paul Champagne documentary. Oh, yeah. Pete Alonzo one. See, it was weird because um, he, like, Alonzo's bracket, bracket that he went through, they weren't hitting as much as the other side of the bracket. They were fucking, sh- like, they were just putting him out of the fucking park. And Vlad, in one of the rounds against Jock Peterson, put up, like, 69 or something total home runs because they went through they go through the four minutes i think he had the 30 second bonus so you get a 30 second bonus if you hit two home runs over 440 and then you they also had a three the if they tie and they did in the second round at 29 which is insane already to hit 29 in four minutes and then they had a uh, they get three swings and they both took three swings and both hit two. So they tied and went to a swing off and they both get like a, no, I think it's the other way around. I think you get one minute in the first overtime and then they both tied there. And then you go to the swing off, which is you get three swings. Each person gets three swings and then they both hit two and then they both hit like one or something. They like tied it up through like multiple overtimes basically. So at that point, He's hit 60-something home runs in, like, a round. He's got to be gassed. Yeah. Especially the way he swings. Like, when you watch him swing, it's almost like he's literally, like, maybe it's his hair because he has, like, long hair. But it looks like, like, the like wrestlers get that effect, too. Like, things look more impactful with long hair because it just it it's, makes things it look more jarring and shit. It's but he was fucking hitting so hard and there's no way you can keep that up for three fucking rounds. No. Especially when you do three overtimes or whatever. He basically hit four rounds of a home run derby and there was no way he was fucking keeping that up. It's about pacing yourself really. I like if I was in that shit I'd want to go second every time because you know what you have to hit, basically. Like you, you know what you have to beat. There was, like, it's cool, though. Like, some guys just do it because they want to have, like, their pitching coach or somebody that they're close to, like their dad or whatever, throwing pitches for the in the home run derby. That's cool. And, you know, but some people, I mean, the thing, you, you win a million dollars. So that's, you know, you definitely want to win the thing. But that kid fucking crushes it. Uh, his dad was an angel for a long time. Uh, so fucking, Vlad Senior was throwing the pitches? No, no. Oh. Uh, I'm not sure who was throwing him. Maybe he's pitching here, his hitting coach or something like that. But a lot of times it's like the guy who throws him pitches in like batting practice and stuff like that. I got to take this call. <clears throat> Has to take it. Hello? Who is it? Uh, not too bad. How are you? Who is it? Who is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I could do that. Am I still training tomorrow, though? Because I've only done that. I've only done the eight to six shift. Yet. Everybody can hear his conversation. He's talking to the work guys. Tell him I said hi. Tell him I said hi. <laughs> Tell him I said hi. Yeah, I could do that. I guess. Yeah, if you need me to. Tell him, I, tell him I said hi. Yeah, not a problem, man. All right, see you too. Tell him I said hi. Come on. 
<laughs> what did they say? Did they say I back? But it's already on. I mean, it's been on the whole time. You dope. Everybody could hear all everything you said. Oh, and now yeah. they know your social security number. They know your credit card number and the ex- expiration date and the CVV number, whatever it is. <laughs> You're kind of fucked. I'm trying to think of the shift I'm working tomorrow now. Well, That's they annoying. just, you know, they want you to, you know. It's annoying. Um, you you should have just said no, you know what I mean? No, said, hey. but the thing is, is that um, if the more you say yes, the more that that you get helped out <laughs> the more they so, call you <laughs> yeah right the more, they, the more you say yes the more they call you <laughs> that's what I mean you just say no and then they stop calling <clears throat> yeah it's whatever but yeah, oh, yeah the, it uh, gives me extra hours it gives me fucking two extra hours tomorrow and fuck it whatever I guess I'm gonna be up that early anyway yeah anyway yeah that was the home run derby. It was fun to watch. It was one of the like record setting home run derbies. Like they were just yeah. That's all. That's all I was hearing was that it was the most. It was the craziest one they've had. It's weird because like I almost like the old format because you had ten outs instead of four minutes to hit pitches, and and like you can't throw a pitch until the last one hits. It's like you know if you if you're getting bad pitches. It's not really your fault, and you're losing time. It's like with the ten outs, you could take as many pitches as you wanted and wait for the pitch that you want to hit. And that's the way it, they change it. I didn't even know they changed yeah, it. That no, sh- goes to show how much I pay attention to the derby. Yeah, it's literally a four minute, just go as hard as you can thing now. It's like a time trial. Yeah, I don't know. I think they did it just for pacing, just to do it, get it, you know, get it done faster. It's always, it's almost like three hours long as it is. So yeah, it's cool though. I like the All Star break; it's fun. Like I get to, you get to watch. I mean, the All Star games today, uh, and then there's like the celebrity softball game and shit, like <laughs> where you got like MGK playing. Why weren't we invited? <laughs> I don't understand. Like I've been, I've gotten, I've talked to him a couple times, and it's like they don't return my calls or. Any of that shit. I think it's because we would draw too Dude, much of a crowd. Stipe was in it. Stipe is in yeah. it? Yeah. He was playing third base. He made a sick catch, though. He made a sick catch. He was, like, backpedaling, and he caught it, like, over the back of his head, fell backwards, and got concussion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, now we're on UFC, so let's talk about last weekend's Stipe. card. Stipe playing in the softball game. <laughs> Let's talk about last weekend's card. We we started watching, and it was Arnold Allen, or whatever the fuck his name is. Arnold Allen. Ver, who was the guy that fought uh, Gilbert Melendez? Stipe. All right. Moving I on. don't even remember that fight. That was I, the first one got... we watched. Yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, I actually don't remember. It's the guy that looks like Bill. Oh, yeah, the guy. Yeah, I wasn't paying much attention to it. <laughs> He does look like Bill a little bit, though. <clears throat> I think it's because the mouth guard, the mouth guard pushes your like your jawline, makes it a little different, you know. But like, I didn't, yeah, I didn't pay much attention to that. I didn't start really watching until I guess Masvidal, right? No, because we had Kietza versus uh, oh, yeah Sanchez. That. that was a great fight. Yeah, and then after that was. Uh, Rockhold and Jan. Jan oh, yeah, Jan. I forgot about Jan. <clears throat> Fucking sent Rockhold to the shadow realm, dude. Yeah. On a counter punch. Yeah, Rockhold got rocked. Holded. Hold. And then, of course, Masvidal Askren, which was hilarious because you got up to do something. I don't know what you went up to do. I mean, we could basically break that fight down in real time. Yeah, okay, so... So, he need him in the face. He need him in the face. <laughs> and that's it. And the end of the fight. <laughs> he hit him two more times. I mean, by the time you say he need him in the face, that's about how long the fight was, so... Yeah. <laughs> but you were getting up to do something. I don't... You were turning up the sound bar or something, and we're watching... I was like... I you felt were, like... You were up here doing something. I was? Yeah. I don't know what you were doing, though. No, I felt like I was the only one, like, paying 
complete attention because <laughs> I jumped up like as soon as it happened. I was like, oh no! And then because I jumped up and like came up to the sound bar basically. Oh, uh, is that what happened? <laughs> yeah, I was. I think Vinny was on his phone. And then Vinny like Vinny like looks up. Yeah, I think he was on his phone. And then he like looks up and then like he immediately was like, oh! And then you he know comes, what? Too is we I all was, got. We were like right here, like as close to the TV as possible. All of a sudden, I was opening a beer. Yeah. And, like, I opened my beer and looked up and I saw it and I ended up getting beer all over me because I jumped. <laughs> yeah, because I remember seeing it and you guys both looking up, like, as it was happening. Yeah, it was fucking... That was fucked up. Yeah. Askren was Askren for it, dude. Yep. You know? He really won. <laughs> it's a very good move by Masvidal, especially when you yeah, look at... Yeah, they showed him practicing yeah. that, too. Like, that he knew he was going to do that. Like, yeah. And was it... Uh, if it didn't work, it didn't work. I mean... Who was he taught? Was it Kobe Covington? Who's the one that's Masvidal's friend? Is it Covington or Poirier? Dustin uh, Poirier. Poirier, yeah. He, he, he was like, yeah, I was telling everybody that Masvidal was going to open up the fight with a flying knee and that you all laughed at me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then he had, like, um, he had, like, a text message from... Masvidal, that was like, I'm like, opening yeah, up, yeah, I'm up. Opening up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you're crazy. And then, then he had video of him like practicing the flying knee. <laughs> it's hilarious. It was literally frame by frame what he did in the fight. But it's like, if someone does that, if you're Askren and you see that, like, do you go, oh, he's going to open it with a flying knee? Or do you go, he's full of shit. He's not opening it with a flying knee. That's why he's saying that. Like, he's saying that to make me think I'm opening it with a flying knee. God, how much do you think that hurt, dude? That had to hurt pretty he, bad, it right? It could have, or he didn't feel it. It looked <sighs> like he went stiff immediately. It put, like, it wasn't, like, on his, like, nose or on the jaw or the chin or anything. It was, like, here. It kind of was, like, tucked in his, like, shoulder almost. It was, like, kind of a weird spot. But fucking just when you sprint at a dude, like, immediately. Especially when he's going down. Yeah, going like, right into down. it. Yeah. yeah. That's insane. It put him out fucking hard. And then he put couple extra fucking he well, peppered him but a couple the thing times. is is that he had to because yeah, the ref didn't stop him that's what's been making me so upset is that the people are talking shit about it because he hit him two more times it happens like, all the fucking time yes though. it does it happens all the time every fight yeah it's well the people who are fucking complaining about that they don't probably even, don't watch ufc yeah. they just saw the knockout they're like that's awesome and then they're like what the fuck why is he still hitting him <laughs> it's like the referee has to stop the fight that's how yeah. it works <laughs> yep play until you hear the whistle and then after that was holly Holm and amanda nunez which was probably the most disappointing fight of the night yep. i was really expecting Holm to at least take it to the second round but she yeah. just she just took that that nunez threw that kick perfectly i mean it, it took the entire like left hemisphere of her face yeah dropped her and then she's like nah. <laughs> It's waving weird. her arms as she's going to the ground. She's like, I'm done. No, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm blowing the whistle. It's like, how do you fight Nunez? It's weird. She's got, she feels like really well-rounded. And I thought Holly was well-rounded too, but it's like. Holly's also 37 years old. Yeah. yeah. And hasn't fought in like a year. You can tell she's getting slower. That's for sure. But not by much, but you can see, like, there's a noticeable difference in, like, your speed. And I think, you know, I think at a certain point, it's like the younger fighters just are, are gonna beat those people. Like, it's just how it's gonna work. Yep. That's the nature of, of MMA, really. It's like. That's the thing, too, is that, like, Jones didn't look that good Saturday, but right. I right. think he looked as good as he wanted to look. Does that makes sense. I think he was focused on playing it somewhat safe. He he wanted to win. I mean, there's no reason he he doesn't want to lose that fight. No, like, for sure. If he's gonna lose a fight, it's gonna be to somebody with a name. And I think you know, I I, I don't know. It I think he fought really well and he fought defensively for sure. He was also on the he was on the aggressive aggressive side the whole fight. Yeah, he was always pushing the fight forward. Well, yeah, that's what I was saying the whole time is he was in the middle of the cage. Yeah, the whole fight and, and like you can you can he give, forces you to walk around the outside. Yeah, and think. you can give uh, Santos all the credit in the world for like landing the strikes he did, but like 
Are you gonna are you gonna give the guy more points for landing one or two solid strikes around? Or are you gonna give points for the guy in landing, you know, six to ten well, decent strikes around while also controlling the cage? Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah, well octagon control is a is a criteria for the judges. Yeah. So they definitely look at that. But some guys also like to fight on the outside. Yeah, like uh there's guys like I mean, Faber kind of likes it. Faber's pretty good backed up. Yep. It's like there's guys that'll throw... the. It's a lot of the unorthodox guys like that kind of like throw spinning elbows and shit like that, short range kind of stuff. Those guys like it because they don't, they don't need to really push the pace or anything like that. But if you can fight defensively and control the cage, that's... That's the way Machida used to fight, and yeah. I think he, he takes a lot from the way Machida used to fight. It's a defensive style, but it's also aggressive. And, like, it's almost an imposing aggressiveness. Like, you're not attacking so much as you're <clears throat> pushing forward, even though you're still kind of hanging back in a way. It's a weird way to fight, but it's it's effective, that's for sure. I mean, I think GSP kind of was like that, too, as far as, like, stand-up. When he was when he was striking, he was kind of like that. He was very good at ranged attacks because he would feign and like he was good at closing distance quickly. That's why his takedowns were so good because he could, you know, tr- you know, trip you up with a jab or something and then shoot in. And I think a lot of guys that do that now, that sort of defensive style, are mostly strikers, whereas Saint Pierre was mostly a wrestler. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. It's a good. It's a safe fighting style, that's for sure. It'll keep you from getting hit, and it's definitely good for the judges scoring. I think you have a place to get away. You can yeah. back out. He can't. Santos can't back out. In no, that especially when he tears every ligament in his knee. Did you see that? Yeah, he fucking he had like three or four, three or four, yeah. or four partial tears. And he was and still he tore fighting his meniscus. through that. Though. That was yeah. in like the second, third round or something. Yeah, he's like out that. till uh, next summer. They said. I mean, to think he did that well. With an injury like that, it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I thought he did really well. I mean, it was a split decision. That's probably the the closest fight I've seen since Jones Gustafson won. Yeah, he sure Jones sure as fuck didn't blow him out of the water. No, which is a little worrying. But dude, I, I just want to see him fight Cormier again. <laughs> yeah, me too. Well, there's a rumor that Jones actually had a back injury. Yeah. Uh, somebody was saying how he didn't do the cartwheel or the somersault when he got in the ring. He didn't try and take him down at all. Right. Uh, he didn't celebrate really. So people were yeah, saying that maybe he, he's a new, he's a new man. You know, he hurt his back. Yeah. I think honestly, maybe he's got, maybe that, it's God that theory is on his side. You know? Yeah. I think that theory makes sense because that's, that's one of the first Jones fights I've seen where he didn't even attempt to take down. But at the you same would think time, that he would say that now, though, now that the fight's over, maybe that he would reveal that there was an injury before. Because most guys, it's like they're not going to say it leading up. Yeah. But afterwards, it doesn't matter. At That's that a good point. point. But I think the other thing too is on the flip side is he probably didn't go in for a takedown because Santos has the one the one punch knockout power. Right. He didn't want to try and catch him. Well, I guess also caught. saying that you had an injury seems like an excuse for not why performing. it was a split decision. Right. Well, yeah, I don't know. Plus, when you're when you're John Jones, no matter what you say, you're going to get scrutinized for it. So yeah, you might well, as well just keep up the, you know. It's funny because, like, he does, but he also gets praised by his fans. He's pretty polarizing fan-wise. Yeah. As weird as that I is. I think what's really annoying <clears throat> is that um, a lot of other fighters have done shit like John and other athletes and stuff, and he's trying to change his image. People still are, are giving him shit for it compared yeah, to guys because, that have done way worse. It's because he acts like he's trying to change his image on social media, or he did. He, like, was doing all this shit like he's, uh, I don't know, like he was just acting like he was changed. And, like, it, it, I think what a lot of people think is that it, it feels like he's putting on a fucking facade, like yeah. a character. Like he's trying to just be, like, a, act like some sort of role model and then off screen he's doing a bunch of shit that he shouldn't be doing. Yeah, but like right now, he's not doing shit he shouldn't be doing. So, he so says. like so that's what I'm saying. That's what right. I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like, oh well he says he's doing good. 
Right. That's ex- you're you just fell into the to in, in line with the agenda. Yeah. But that's what I mean is like he's he always says he's not doing anything, and then a couple months later it comes out that he's. <laughs> I guess so. Cocaine. I guess so. <laughs> I it's almost it, like a kid. Like, like if I look at Mike Trout, right? Mike Trout is genuinely like that, right? But like if that's that's what he's what but, John Jones is trying to be. But like, that's the thing is like the hard work. Why not guy. just assume that he is trying to change himself instead of just keep criticizing him for wanting to change? I hope he is trying to change himself, but because like what if all of a sudden but it's just that he's already said he's trying to change himself and then doesn't seem so to what change if what anything. if mike trout gets caught juicing right right and then like gets suspended then he comes back and he still goes back to being a genuine dude are you going to be like well he already screwed us once yeah i don't believe him that's what you would do yeah that's just a, this is being very cynical man that's not <laughs> a way to live your life dude <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't even once, though. It's like Jones has been caught with multiple shit. And he, I think even from the start, he was kind of just being, acting like the good guy and shit. Like, I don't know. He, I just, think feels kinda, he just feels fake to me. In some I was ways. just going to say that. I f- it feels fake. But I think it's, it's healthier to assume that he's doing well instead of, it's almost like people are rooting for him to fail again. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Instead of rooting for him to be a good guy. Yeah. I, I think he... I would like for him to be a good guy for sure. <laughs> I just don't. I, I feel like he's playing such a character because I've seen him fall back so many times. Just you know, just from the shit that I hear, it's like didn't he like hit some chick and then run flee the scene or something? <laughs> didn't he like hit a pregnant lady in like a car accident? Yeah, he got in a hit and run and left the scene. <laughs> That's not a good move. Well, you know, don't do that first. You know, first of all. But, like, you know what kills me, too, is, like, Conor McGregor has done fucked up shit, too, and nobody yeah. says anything about Conor McGregor. I don't li- like Conor that much. I The thing is, like, I like Conor in the cage. He's fun to watch. But I never, I, I don't know, I never was a big fan of, like, shit talkers, though. No. Because you know it's, like, a character. Some of them it's not. Like the Diaz brothers, right? That's not a character. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. They genuinely Are don't they? give a fuck about people and they want to fight people. Like they want to fight anybody in a fucking Whole Foods. Like it's like they don't care. Masvidal is the same way. Masvidal has always been it's, like this. It's almost like you can tell, though, who's putting on a show and who isn't. Like with Connor, it's really obvious that he's putting on a fucking show. Yeah. Like, just the way he talks and the things he comes up with and, like, the phrases he uses, you can tell he's, it's for hype. And he's good at building hype, and that's a good thing in that business, for sure. You want that. You want a Chael Sonnen, like, you want a Ben Askren, you want a, you know, Conor McGregor, because um, it builds it builds hype. Otherwise, you gotta build it yourself with promos and shit. That's not easy to do, really. Is is McGregor the best at building up a fight? I would say so. Some, you would say so? I would say so. Yeah. I mean, he fucking threw a thing through a, a dolly through a bus. I mean, you know that was all for hype. They used that fucking footage like over and over in the fucking promo building and shit. That was for the, the, the Habib fight, yeah. right? And he they built that fight over like a year or at least. So, yeah, and he he does a lot of, like, <clears throat> I think he does just enough press to where, like, people get enough of it, and, and he gets enough exposure, too. I think he's he's probably one of the best at building it, for sure. Uh, BJ Penn was okay at it. Uh, Matt Sarah was pretty decent. I think um, my favorite, my favorite, build up for a fight will always be McGregor and Alvarez. Mm, yeah. And also McGregor and Diaz was a great one too, playing touch button touch button the park and stuff like that. But but I think uh you can tell if a guy's faking by how they act after the fight too. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think the McGregor and I was talking about this the other night. The McGregor Alvarez fight is really what cemented McGregor for me and for a lot of people. Because not only did McGregor get, that was the fight where he got both belts, right? When he became champ champ. 
if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah. He basically ruined Eddie Alvarez's legacy that night. What was the uh, division he was even in, fighting in? His first belt was in... Featherweight. Yeah, and did he move up or down? I don't remember. I think up, he moved right? up, yeah, to, he up to lightweight. Yeah. Yeah, it has to be lightweight. Yeah. But yeah, no, he basically erased Eddie Alvarez's legacy with that fight. And Eddie Alvarez is one of the best fighters of all time. Right. Now all people think about is how he got fucking tuned up by Conor McGregor. Yeah, well, and then basically went downward from there. I mean, he was only... Yeah, but the thing is, is it can all change with one fight. That's what's crazy. Is like, you saw... You saw Aldo knock out McGregor. Get knocked out by McGregor. Or get knocked out by McGregor. And it changed completely. Like, his whole legacy changed completely. Because Aldo was this guy that was beating everybody. Untouchable. Just a world beater. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it just, you know, one knockout. And it changed And I think it's a knockout is what does it. Even even Askren, though, if you think about it. It's like, Askren was beating everybody. Everybody that wasn't in the UFC, though. Yeah, until he got here. And it's weird because he... He almost, with Robbie Lawler, he almost could have lost that fight. It was cl- real close to being yeah. stopped, I think. And it could have been stopped. I, I still think it could have been stopped. And maybe, maybe, well, I guess I can't say it should have been because obviously he fought on, you know. Obviously he was able to keep going, so it's like you can't say it should have been stopped. There's fights that uh, you feel like you want him to stop because the guy's getting fucking destroyed yep but sometimes they feel like they can get out of it shab talks about that a lot you know like guys uh that happened with bisping and saint pierre yeah because bisping didn't tap yeah yeah bisping's a monster he's one of my favorites ever man the count man yeah hey he was a good talker too that was a crazy fight Man, I don't know how if I've ever been more nervous for a St. Pierre fight than that, because it's like after so much time off, it's like there's so many questions about how St. Pierre is going to perform. Because back in the day when he was in his prime, it was like everybody he fought, like you knew how he was going to fight. You knew what shape he was going to be in. Like you knew he was just going to beat dudes up like Josh Koscheck and. Fucking even dude, like even when he beat up BJ Penn, I was nervous for the first BJ Penn fight because BJ was a savage at the time, and you were the question was like George's wrestling versus BJ's jujitsu, and BJ just got neutralized and really got fucking mauled. So it shows that there's like levels. It's really weird. There's some fucking crazy talent right now. And it's like, there's no, it's every division is a toss up too. It's like, you, nothing's really set in stone. I think, yeah, especially with how Jones and Santos' fight went. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. crazy. Because in the heavyweight division, I mean, you got DC and Stipe fighting again. I yeah, don't really it's know. Like all of these can go any way, though. Yeah. It's like, you really don't know. Jones, who the fuck is Jones fighting next? For fuck's sake, like, for, <laughs> Askren could have thro- come out and thrown a flying knee. It's like you wouldn't even have fucking. It wouldn't have been that much different. It's almost like a flip of a coin. The even the champs aren't like levels above. You know there are champs sometimes that come around that can just clean out a division, like Jones. Yeah, when he first came in, and yeah, um, or Mighty Mouse. Kane Velasquez when he first. I mean Demetrius took the Johnson left the UFC because he cleaned out the fucking division yeah it's like you know at a certain point you're that much better than everybody you yeah and, and even as for as much shit as people give Cejudo I mean he's really really good too I mean right um I don't think he should have won that Mighty Mouse fight at all I watched that one that one was fucking bullshit yeah but I mean he fucking destroyed Dillashaw manhandled the guy while he was on what the fuck those steroids or whatever he was on. Yeah, some Mexican supplements, probably. <clears throat> Five-hour energy. Yeah. <laughs> Cinco hour bang, energy. Bang energy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy sport, man. <clears throat> it's one of the craziest sports because it's like, really, though, like, anything can happen. It's not like It's not like watching a certain football team play the last year's Super Bowl champions. 
like you kind of know what's going to happen here. Yeah. Like I like there are football games you can predict. In in fighting it's not really that way. Certain ones you can, I would say. But a lot of times guys are switching divisions now and shit like that. It's Yeah, and I I think I think my favorite thing about the UFC is that like every Rockhold was fighting at a different weight, you know? Like yeah, he how do you up. predict that kind of fight? Yeah. Um you know what he can do at middleweight or was he Fighting at middleweight, or he was fighting at middle middle middleweight last night. No, he's fighting at light heavyweight. Was he? Yeah, I thought he moved up from welterweight to middleweight. No, because Jan is uh, light heavyweight. Yeah. Oh, okay, that's right. Light heavyweight's kind of stacked right now. Yeah, they got uh, Johnny they Walker. Have, they have Jan. They got Jan. I'd like to watch um, really anybody fight Jones personally, but. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I was going to say, like, the thing with UFC that I love is that every single UFC event is an event. Right. It's also, like, 85 bucks. So yeah. it's cheap, you know? Yeah, totally cheap. It's affordable. You know what I mean? Like, the... <laughs> There's no hoops to jump through. Yeah. <laughs> None at all. The family of five can afford it easily. Yeah. <clears throat> Fuck. It's like, you don't have to have ESPN Plus and order the pay-per-view, you know? That's pretty cool. <laughs> I literally looked at it and I was like, "Oh, so you have to buy a subscription to ESPN Plus, which is like five ninety nine a month, and then pay seventy nine ninety eight or something for the pay per view." So, and they're thinking that's more accessible to people. I remember when the pay per views were fifty five bucks back when, like. Like a little, like around UFC 100 or something like that. They were like 55, 60 yeah. bucks. That is more affordable. I think they expect a group of fucking people to all get together. And so, all pitching money, basically. This is the thing with, um, or like light, bars light heavyweight. Or That's what they expect is bars to buy the fight or whatever. And then, yeah. There really isn't anybody in light heavyweight that's good. Well, Bad. you have you have <laughs> Santos, Smith, and Gustafson. The last the last three guys that Jones has fought, he beat all three of them. And then you have Dominic Reyes, right? And then you have Jan Blahovic, and then you have Volkan Ozdemir. Tough. Yeah, Ozdemir is tough too. But then after that, you just have a bunch of guys that I don't think there's anybody that's like as athletic as John. No, in that division. That's the thing that sets him apart is his athleticism and I think his creativity as well. He's and also his body type, obviously. He's got that Anderson Silva body, you know. Gus has a similar thing. And that's the reason that Gus has fought him as many times as he has. And yeah. It's been they've been good fights. It's a tough spot for him. I think what's crazy is that Jones has literally been fighting every three months. And he wants to keep doing that. Right. He wants to stay in shape. He wants to keep working out. It's a good motivator, that's for sure. It I mean, if he keeps this up, he's going to be fighting again in, like, September or October. Yeah. There's guys that like to do that, though. Cowboy does that. I was just going to say, Cowboy does that to the fuck. Cerrone is one of my favorite fighters ever, dude. That guy is awesome. That dude does not give a fuck. He's like, oh, if I get knocked out, I'm fighting next week. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i don't give a shit and then he's like cave diving and shit underwater <laughs> he's got a story on rogan uh about when he was cave diving and almost di- cave diving and almost died yeah <clears throat> and it was insane like <laughs> i was like Fuck jesus that. Christ, that's spelunking this guy's a right fucking is what monster. it's called spelunking yeah it's like i don't ever want to do that i never want to be underwater with something above me blocking my path to being able to breathe. I can't believe the Anthony Smith fight, how hyped that up, how, how hyped up that was. And now like, you know, what the fuck is Anthony Smith doing? He's not going to get a rematch. No, they'll find something for him to do. They got a lot of guys. Oh yeah. Well, he beat, he beat Gustafson. I forgot about that. He did. Yeah. He, He fucking choked him out. Yeah. And Gustafson retired after that. Yeah, it's a shame. Gus is one of the best fighters that's never won. Yeah, he is. And it's crazy because he 
can't. Yeah, he get loses over that. that fight against Jones, That's and what then I mean. he he fucking. It's like he he he, can't he just get over that be, hump. Yeah, yeah. And if he gets over that, it's like where does he go from there? It's kind of a weird situation for him. That's gotta yeah. suck. That's gotta be a shit spot. Especially because he he goes in. That's like roller coaster tycoon where you build a custom coaster, and the launch speed isn't enough to get over the first hump. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically what he is. <laughs> I'm gonna build that in roller coaster tycoon and just call it Gus. Well, it's crazy because <laughs> in his last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, his last eight fights, he lost five. So basically, he he was essentially twelve and one. Yeah, twelve and zero. Basically, he was twelve and zero, and then fought John Jones. He only lost to Jones, Rumble Johnson, DC, and Anthony Smith. So he only lost to dudes that are a clear cut above him. So he's in like that one. Yeah, he's like too good for everybody below him, but he's not good enough for like the top ec- echelon. You know. Yeah, it's gatekeeper. What other? Yeah, he is a gatekeeper. What other fucking? I'm gonna I mean, build when I build that roller coaster. I'm for sure leaving the exit with no path, so that everybody's thoughts are like, or it'll pop up like guests are complaining about the exit to Gus Gustafson. Because <laughs> 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 that's what we're doing right now, basically. I yeah. really wish he was still fighting. And he's he's John's age. He's only thirty one. Yeah, he can't move divisions either. Like he's got the body type that's built for that spot. Like I don't think he can. I mean, I guess he could go up, but it's like you wonder. Like he, if he's thicker, he's not going to be the same style fighter. He's he's really built for that spot. So I don't know. I think it's, I guess it's if he right went move. to Bellator, he would clean house. He would clean house yeah. easily. If he went to one FC, he, he would he would clean house. But yeah, it's just it's you wonder where his confidence is. Yeah, especially after losing to Anthony Smith. Not yeah. that Anthony Smith is a bad fighter at all. He's one of the best in the business right now. Well, but it isn't John Jones, you know. He's fought Jones a couple Twice. times. It's like the first one was the best fight I've ever seen. Yeah, and the second one was the best knockout I've ever seen Jones do. I think the closest fight I've ever seen was Shogun and. Uh, Shogun and Machida won. That was the closest fight I've ever seen. To go to a decision, at least. But then the rematch, uh, Shogun won. I think he knocked him out or something like that. TKO'd him. I missed that. I missed fucking Shogun. That dude was this fucking monster. I love Shogun. I actually just beat him in UFC 3 yesterday. <laughs> he sees, he's in that game? Yeah. So is uh, Minotoro have- Noguera for some reason. Yeah. Well, they probably just put like legends in there. Is Ortiz in it? Yeah, they don't let Liddell they don't have in it. fighters retire, which is annoying as shit. So mm-hmm. like, Daniel Cormier is like forty five years old, and he's like thirty six and three, and it's like he already is basically semi retired. He wouldn't be fighting another six years. Yeah, that's true. And I love that they always make John Jones become like a fucking no nobody in those games. <laughs> Like, the progression in some of those games, like any sports game, like, if you play franchise and play, like, four years, you don't know where people are going to go. Yeah. It's weird. It, I think it goes by, like, their potential rating and stuff like that they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if it's, like, a B or something, they'll start to fall a little bit. Especially certain in, in, guys, like, in 2K, it gets it gets bad. Yeah. In 2K, it's, like, they'll, they'll have guys where, like, their, their uh, peak, because you can set their peak. Mm-hmm. So, like, you set their peak start to 27, so at age 27, that's the best they're going to get. Yeah. And then their peak end is when they start to diminish. So there's guys like LeBron, where his peak start was, like, 21, but his end is, like, 41. So he's basically going to be the same player for 20 years, mm-hmm. which makes no sense. Yeah, I like the way the show does it, because it has literally a potential rating, so it's A, B, C, D, or, like, F or something, I think. But... So basically, you just get guys that are A's or B's, put them in your minor league system for a while, and then and you once win. yeah once they're ridiculous, you just call them up. Yeah, the NHL games like that where their potential will be like what spot on the line they are. Yeah. So like a guy like Steven Stomkos will be a franchise player, so you know he's going to end up being at least a ninety two or ninety three overall. But then it also has like the accuracy. 
So like if you have a, if you have a guy that's listed as a franchise player, but the accuracy is low, yeah, there's a chance he just ends up being like an 85. So you want to like take a gamble, I guess. Madden has a good, but the thing yeah, with even Madden, 85 though is like a solid bench player, like a line three guy or something, you know. And yeah, NHL like 85 is a solid like second line. You could even have a first line of all 85s and be set. Yeah, that's true. But you're not going to take over a game with them. But Madden makes me mad with like their development trait because all it does is make them get better faster and they still drop off as soon as they get to be 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> there's a franchise I did with... You gotta put some work into that, man. They do. There's a franchise I did with John Ross, the guy on the Bengals that, like, broke the 40-yard dash record. Yeah. And he, he turned 29 and his speed went from a, a 99 to, like, a 91. And then he turned thirty, Still and his fast. speed went to like an eighty-four. And it's like he would not, he would not be losing yeah. s- seconds off of his, off his time in two years. Like, yeah. I mean, shit. Mike Wallace is still faster than everybody else in the NFL, and he's like thirty-three years old. You don't lose. I don't think you lose speed. You definitely lose like, you might, but not that much. No, no. I, I want to say like you lose. You definitely lose acceleration. Speed, I, would I would say. Yeah. Yeah, like launch speed, basically. Yeah. Velocity. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm. Did you watch that? Uh, did you watch the Rogan with Bob Lazar yet? No, I didn't. That was so fucking funny. Because, like, everybody is talking so much shit. Like, it's so... It's literally this polarizing thing between alien believers and non-believers, basically. So this guy, like, he apparently worked at... Uh, like Los Alamos and then worked at S4 or something, which is like a subset of Area 51. And he claims that like he was brought in to like work on like the propulsion systems and shit like that because he was building like rocket engines and shit like that back where he lived at home. And the dude's a smart dude, but apparently what he's, he's claiming is that he was brought into this facility and worked to work on that propulsion system for these alien crafts that they found. And he claims that they found like nine UFOs and they're all being held in like S4 or whatever. And he never, like he says that he saw them in like the hangars and shit. <clears throat> and he talks about like the way the propulsion works and how it bends like gravity and shit like that. But like, honestly, there's a there's a documentary about it on Netflix too, and uh, he's got his story seems to fall in pretty well, like a lot of the points and shit. But there's like the the places he claims to go to school don't have record of like him ever being there and shit. And he says like it's the FBI trying to cover him up and shit. It's a really fucking weird story, and I basically what I took from it is he's telling what he thinks is is the truth. So some people believe he actually is telling the truth and there's actually UFO crafts and shit, like actually spacecrafts there. I don't buy it, Yeah. but I think <clears throat> what happened was they discovered this element, element 115 or whatever, which came from outer space in some sort of way, probably just came from an asteroid or some sort of impact. And they're probably using that element to develop something that's a different propulsion system that he's never seen before. And his way of explaining it is aliens. Yeah. Or, or, a, and I mean, the crafts that he says he saw were shaped like, you know, discs. And he does a pretty good job of like, he goes pretty deep at explaining how they look, how they, how they work and shit. But it's like, I think he's just telling what he thinks is the truth. Yeah, and I think a, there's a lot of shit in that, in those areas though, that the government is developing that, they obviously don't want other countries to know about and they're just trying to hide certain things from the public. They don't, it's not like they need to expose this kind of shit. Like if they're working on a propulsion system that doesn't work, why are they going to fucking say anything? Yeah. Until well, it, it works. It brings me to like, even if it does. Right? Yeah. It's like, well, it's like how to. squids work, right? Squids work on a propulsion system. Yeah. Kind of. The way he's explaining it is like it bends gravity in front of the craft and pulls it forward. So, which I guess I don't know much about it, physics at all, really. But it's I, Anthony on here, you know, 
I really couldn't <clears throat> tell you. Yeah. Or BFAM. <clears throat> um, it reminds me, like, that whole argument is like, uh, when you talk to people about ghosts. Yeah. You know, it's like, you saw what you saw. You heard what you heard. Right. Whether or not it was a ghost or an alien, but we don't what, know. What? But you saw what you saw. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's how See, I treat stuff like that. Exactly. There's a lot of times, like, you'll be turning your head real quick to focus. You'll see something out of the corner of your eye. You're, sometimes you're... Because your brain never wants to not process something. It wants you're, to you're, explain. It wants to justify what it's seeing. Yes. And... It, um, it needs to have some sort of explanation as to yeah. what it's seeing. Well, I was going to... I was... That happened to me the other night. There's a corner in my room that's like... Uh, like four, all the walls meet in this one spot in my room. Yeah. So like the light hits it weird. So when when the lights are off, but there's still a little bit of light in, my room is white. So the wall bounces off, and it just looks like a perfect pentagon in the corner yeah. that's completely lit up because that's where all the light bounces to. So like if I wake up in the middle of the night and I see that, I'm like, oh shit, and then I'm like, oh yeah, that's just the the corner of where all the walls meet. Yeah. Because it's like at a slope, but it's really just you know a wall. There's nothing there. Yeah. But my brain, like, subconsciously tries to put something there. Yeah, there were certain shapes, like, when I was a kid, I would see at night just laying in bed in the pitch black that looked like a human or something. Yeah. I remember having, like, my robe or something hanging up on a hook, and then there was something up above it, and it kind of looked like there was a person standing there. Mm -hmm. Even now, I kind of look at, like, that clock as, like, a head. I can sort of see shoulders and shit like around it. It's weird. Your your brain wants to think there's something there. I had that happen as a kid because I used to have a ladder outside my room against the wall, and there was like a hat hanging off the ladder. Yeah. So it just looks like a gray man standing. Yeah. Well, I think it also happens too when you lose someone that you that's close to you. And you start to see their face in strangers' faces. Yeah, and you start to want to think that it's them too. I don't know. It's it's a weird thing. Like, and who knows? Maybe there is some sort of uh, other plane that they're on, and in some way, they know about presences or know where you are, or what you're doing, or whatever. But if that's the case, it's fucking weird, dude. I don't want people. I want fucking everybody watching me, dude. Like, get out right. Of here. Back off for a minute. You know, go do go do uh, dead people stuff. You know, what do they do? What do they do for fun? I don't know, but I got a shit bad. Can we take a break? I kind of have to shit too, actually. I mean, we can. I don't yeah. have ads for, well, I guess I can pop an ad in the middle. No, I'll put it in the beginning for you guys because, you know, yeah, I yeah. feel like ad breaks in the middle are annoying. They are. All right. We'll be back in like a split second. So, we're back, and you guys didn't even notice the difference. It's almost like nothing even happened, <clears throat> except for the, uh, except for that cut, that quick edit. What does uh, what does Johnny Knoxville do nowadays? We were just well, I that's completely out of nowhere to the listeners. To the listeners, I'm just like Johnny Knoxville. Um, I think he definitely uh, he has to do something, right? He's got so much money, probably just from the Jackass movies. But Steve-O still does uh, YouTube stuff. Oh, wait, hang on. We got our first suggestion for the episode. Oh, I put man. on Facebook, what is something Seth and I don't discuss enough on the show? Uh, Josh Dem, our buddy Josh, suggested, please talk about birds. Birds. Oh, All we right. already talked about birds. We didn't we... talk about birds, but he said more birds. Oh. <laughs> please. Well, I guess we don't talk about them enough is what Yeah, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, More birds. birds. Um, well, so there's birds. Do you think right? birds are an underrated pet? Well, no. they live a long time. Yeah, but you can't. They're a good companion. They're smart. You can pet them. You can play with them. Yeah, I can't guess. squeeze them though. I guess, but some of them are just birds that don't just are in cages all the time, right? My grandma has a bird, and that thing's always in the fucking cage. It's like, what's the point of even having it? It just is in. It's just there. 
Yeah, like if I was going to get a it bird, it would be exist. like one of the bigger ones that you can keep. Yeah, like a falcon. <laughs> <laughs> or like a cockat- cockatoo? Yeah. Or a, are those the big ones, the cockatoos, the yeah. big white ones? Yeah, or like a pterodactyl or something. What about, I, I would want something that talks to you, you know? So like a cockatoo or a parrot? Yeah. Parrots really aren't that big. Macaws Parrots are, are kind of sick. I would want a parrot just so I can have it on my shoulder like a pirate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did that come from? Did pirates actually have those? Uh, let me look it up. It has to be somewhat true, right? Because I don't think they would just come up with, let's put a parrot on this pirate. <laughs> like, it doesn't make any sense. But the parrot used to always be like the first mate, almost. He was almost the first mate. He was the real first mate. Oh, so pirates had parrots as a sign of uh, riches. Because... Uh, okay. Colorful exotic birds weren't very common in Europe, so pirates would ha- have all these exotic parrots and stuff with them to look cool. It's weird. What keeps the parrot from just piecing out? Well, probably all the gold and shit, right? The yeah, parrot, but the parrot likes the gold. They're fucking gold diggers, dude. Parrots are. Yeah, I don't know. I think parrots are cool because they. They make you look like a pirate, especially if you're wearing an eye patch. Then you really look like a pirate. An eye patch and a fucking parrot. The parrot has to have an eye patch too. Yeah. Well, yeah, it does. Yeah, they do do that sometimes. You got to get like a tiny parrot eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. There's fucking there's ducks outside in my backyard, and they uh, have a bunch of eggs and shit. There's ducks keep, in the backyard? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? There's ducks. You have ducks in your backyard? Yeah. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? I love how you're still trying to clarify it. It's not that complicated. <laughs> no, I mean, like, did you put them There's there? There's ducks in your backyard? No, I didn't put them there. They just showed up. They showed up, yeah. Before we opened the pool, there was, like, a cover on it, and they looked at it and basically like, hey, there's a pond, and they landed there. There's a bunch of eggs in the bushes near the pool. And the mom is annoying as shit because it keeps coming and swimming in the pool and pooping and stuff. Are they out there now? I don't know. Probably. There's a bunch of eggs. I don't know if they hatched. As soon as they do, they're gone. We're getting like animal control to get rid of those fucking things. I told them just to get kill the eggs. <laughs> yeah. Just step on the eggs and throw a rock at the bit at the big one. Or throw a basketball at it or something, you know? I think I think that'd be a good prank is to like get a bunch of eggs, <laughs> get a bunch of like fertilized, <laughs> just swap like, them out. Fer- fertilized? No, no, no. Get a bunch of fertilized bird eggs and just leave them in your neighbor's backyard. So then, like, it's the long con. Like the eggs just hatch and they're like, where yeah, all these yeah. ducks come from? That's true. Yeah, <laughs> just move the nest. Yeah, you know, like I almost want to just get a bunch of regular eggs. <laughs> from the fridge and swap them out and see what happens <laughs> dude that duck would be freaking out i mean there's no way those eggs are gonna hatch anyway there's no way they're fertilized enough <clears throat> <laughs> just put regular eggs there robin eggs the the chocolate ones with the crunchies in them. yeah yeah they're in a wrapper still like the little easter ones like a like a <laughs> oh <laughs> Just, I don't even know what it would think. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, these are definitely going to be babies. And then all of a sudden, it's just uh, an what, Easter What if you replaced them with a different bird's eggs, like cat quail? Bird. You, you replace them with quail eggs. Yeah. The duck is just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we would have to acquire quail eggs. <laughs> That's the hardest part. Of it. We got to find someone. For with- such a little payoff, too. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Just That's just- one of those, like, it's like one of those pranks that, like, you don't get to see the results of it, you know? You just hope. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just, like, think like, about like what arson. Yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, even leaving shit on someone's front porch like that, that i never understood unless you sit there in the bushes and wait for the person to come out like when you light the bag on fire yeah what if nobody's even home how do you even fucking know that's a fucking i can't believe people thing. used to do that shit yeah to each that's other. dumb as fuck <clears throat> i don't know i've never seen anybody tp a house or any of that shit either you know that shit's old school it's like if you TP to house now, you'd just be arrested, arrested like yeah. in like fifteen minutes. 
Because the neighbors would be like, yep, he's doing that for some reason. You have to do it to a place out in the country where no one's there and it has to be like middle of the night. When like, no it was on. that damn Clear Shots podcast. Yeah. Because <laughs> we TP our house and put duck eggs in our mailbox. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had to do something with the duck eggs. <laughs> what if we TP the duck eggs? Yeah, you could do that. Because <laughs> that's going to take a long time for her to clean that up, that mommy yeah. duck, you know? Ducks don't really have much of a. They can't fly for shit, dude. They suck at flying. That's why you see. see that's why I'm saying just hit it with a basketball. You can hit it with a basketball pretty easy, especially if you whip it real hard. Blech. Hit it with like a four seam fastball or something. You know what I mean? Throw a knuckleball at it. <laughs> yeah, because then it won't know which way it's gonna go. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> <laughs> just the the idea of a duck just like, like trying to strafe it like out. A, the, an idea of a duck like squaring up with you and then just like kind of juking and <laughs> shimmying to avoid a ball that's as big as it yeah yeah <laughs> man yeah that seems like a likely scenario i mean i feel like a baseball would probably kill it oh my god yeah if you came at it with like a even like a 60 mile an hour a change up, you know. Yeah, I think a thirty mile an hour baseball would kill it. <laughs> like, it would at least knock it out long enough for you to fucking kill it, finish it for off, for you to you TP know? it. See, I think it'd be funny if if we did the the paper bag with poop, except instead of the poop, we just put a duck a in duck, it yeah. <laughs> or duck eggs. <laughs> so the guy's like, "Oh my god!" and then smushes it. And we have the duck there. Kills a bunch of the duck. duck is there watching it, and it's like, "Why would you do that?" You just killed a bunch of baby ducks, dude, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I think the the idea of us like taking the time to put baby ducks in a bag. Yeah. <laughs> Whose house we'd have just to do it for at such a little payoff. We'd have to do it at Kenny's house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just to make him kill a bunch of ducks. <clears throat> <laughs> That's what he gets. That's what he gets for telling us that uh what's his face sings. Uh, Marilyn Manson. <laughs> Charles Manson. <laughs> Charles Manson has songs. <laughs> I think, no, I think that's what he gets you're for like, saying. <laughs> you're like, he's on iTunes? <laughs> <laughs> he is on iTunes. I have him. He actually was on iTunes. <clears throat> it's impressive, though. He's got some jams, I'll tell you that much. I never, like, heard anything about that before. No. I didn't know that, that he ever did anything like that. He, how the fuck did he know that? He's how, did just Kenny, like, yeah. how did Kenny know that? Yeah, he's just like, yeah, they did. Uh, he did a bunch of collabs with the Beach Boys and shit. It's like, how do you know this information, and why would you ever be looking it up? Like, I don't, I don't. I guess I don't look up enough information on market uh, research killers. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't. I don't really go down that uh, rabbit, rabbit hole too often. No. Let's see if we have any other I thought about doing a podcast, uh, like a solo podcast, where you just surf Wikipedia and just go down rabbit holes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it seems like it'd be fun. <clears throat> You'd learn a lot of shit, probably. Well, I, like I was telling you, I was trying to do the rug burn rundowns. Yeah. I got to get sunglasses, though. That's that's all my outfit's missing, is sunglasses. Yeah, you can get sunglasses for like a dollar at the dollar store, though. Yeah, probably. Because it's a dollar store, so things are dollar. That's what they... Well, I always think it's funny when you go to a dollar store and shit isn't, is not more than a dollar. <laughs> it's like, well, why are you calling this a dollar <laughs> store? I thought you said everything was one dollar. It even says everything's one dollar on the sign. The... <sighs> You're thinking of like Dollar General and Family Dollar and stuff. It's generally a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Dollar Tree is everything's a dollar. Right. Real deals, everything's a dollar. That makes sense. It should be. I think otherwise you're just like, it's almost false advertising. You know, you're just getting people in there. I feel like I see so much false advertising on Facebook. Like, oh, yeah. every single mobile game ever has an advertisement on Facebook that looks nothing like the game you're about to download. I've seen like a couple of them where you'll just click on the ad and you'll see just like screenshots of the game and it's not anything like the video that they just showed you at all. And a lot of times it's stealing brand like assets and shit. 
Like, yeah, the I, I feel steel like we shit. talked about this with Bill the other day, and I can't remember what it was about. <clears throat> I think it was the Lord of... No, it was the Game of Thrones game that's on Facebook. But it's really just they like... They all have the same art style and shit, too. Like, it all looks exactly the same. It's kind of weird. And, like, there's so many games with, like, basically the same, like, thumbnail. Like, a little uh, icon. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like this little cartoon thing. Got a text message. <clears throat> Forgot to turn my phone on silent. <clears throat> well, I'm glad I didn't turn my phone on silent because, you know, work had to call me. Yeah. Because I'm the yes man now. I'm basically picking up all these extra shifts and switching shifts around because I put in for Harbor Fest off and I want to get it. Right. Because it's the only time my family comes up from down south. So, what about Kiss Tuesdays? I already get Tuesdays off. That's tonight, actually. We're doing pizza and wings. You guys get to listen to Kiss. <laughs> on a rock and roll all night. You guys are listening to that song I just on repeat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'd all dressed up with face paint and shit. <laughs> this is my outfit, man. I like the top button jersey look, and then you get to see I support the Marine Corps. Right, right. But you gotta get you gotta get intimate with me, baby, to see yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta work. You, you gotta, gotta put work in the work. It. Yeah, to see the USMC. Um. No, I was gonna say, uh, Facebook is is getting fucked because they're losing user. Ba- they're losing their user base, and they're right. spending all this money on advertising. You know, they're losing a lot of users just to themselves on Instagram. <laughs> a lot of people are moving to Instagram or Twitter or something. You know. <laughs> it's fucking weird, and it, f- Facebook owns Instagram, so it's they own Snapchat too, right? Do they? They might. I think so. And they own Oculus. Yeah, they do. And they've done nothing with it, basically. Well, it's just like how EA owns the Star Wars rights for video games, and yeah, they've, and they've made two mediocre it. games to show for it. Right. I think people are just getting sick of. Like, I, people just keep posting the same shit on Facebook, and it's like, it just gets boring as fuck. And then it's like, I think the way that their whole algorithm... Like, when I get on Facebook, which is rarely, it's... I see, like, a few posts from certain pages, like the Packers page, or... Like, basically, <clears throat> from pages, not from people. So, like, the whole first, like bunch of fucking posts maybe like 20 posts i see are from pages and they're also sponsored ads so it's never like it's never actually any of my friends or whatever my back is hurting sitting in that chair yeah that's not a comfy chair that's why it's the guest chair but yeah, no, I got the same thing on my Facebook. My Facebook but is it's also, literally... You, but it's also just people trying to get mad at each other. <laughs> like, yeah. it's never anything friendly. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because like, whenever something happens, and other people have noticed this too, I, um, when that, whenever there's controversy, like the Colin Kaepernick thing with Nike and the, the mm. Betsy Ross sneaker, all I posted on Facebook was Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. And it started a whole discussion on my on that post. I didn't even have to say anything. Then the other day I put the Little did. Mermaid, and then that turned into a whole thing. And it's like, <laughs> it's like you don't even have to define your own parameters. Like no, you just the, put the topic. <clears throat> I do want to get into both those things since they're recent. We didn't talk about Kaepernick with Bill on. Well, there was. I mean, even. Like, I, f- I feel like there's just too much of that shit. Like, social media. Yeah. I was scrolling through Instagram, and I saw Brendan Schaub had posted something about Stranger Things 3 or whatever. Some dude on the comments was like, dude, fuck, I can't wait till this show dies, and I hate this show and all this shit. It's like, you're, I guarantee you've never watched the show, and you don't like the show because a bunch of people like the show. It's like an extreme version of me. Yeah. Well, like, yeah, but th- that's the thing. Like, it's almost, people almost think it's cool now to not like the thing that everybody likes. I'm a trailblazer, man. I'm sorry. But it's like, don't go, <clears throat> I hate this show. I can't wait till it dies. I hope this show gets canceled when you've never seen the show. Just don't do that. Like, that's yeah, retarded. just don't watch it. Yeah, don't watch it. Don't bother posting on it on a post about it on Instagram. 
Yeah. It's, there's nothing that you will get out of it. Yeah. Nothing. What do they expect to get from it? Like, what is the end game? To they piss wanna, someone off, They right? want to be like me, dude. Yeah, basically. I shut him down. I don't usually comment on shit on Instagram. I was like, dude, you're being... Stop. I, like, I literally was like, I hate people that do this. You're being a contrarian just for the sake of being a contrarian. And he... Like, I, I put, like, a whole fucking paragraph on him, dude. I put him down, dude. He was crying for sure. <laughs> well, that's what I get... <clears throat> I get like that with people on Reddit. It's like, like at a certain uh, point, like I see those things and I'm like, I shouldn't yeah. comment, but I'm, I, I actually might. Your, your monologue <sighs> is like, you know, Seth, you always say you're not going to say anything, but yeah. this guy went too far. Yeah. Well, I did that. I didn't talk about it. I might have about, uh, there was a post on Reddit a while ago and it still makes me mad because, cause on Reddit specifically, you have people complaining about the lack of structured content and discussion. Yeah. And then you propose and you give out structured content and discussion and people are still just like, oh no, no, you're wrong. Yeah. Well, why do you think I'm wrong? You just are. So it's like, and then they get- the community does it to themselves. Yeah. It's funny when there's like a long discussion on Reddit and like one opinion is getting upvoted and the other is just getting down. Oh my God. Crazy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, I had that happen <clears throat> with the guy that I, I definitely told you about this. I don't think it was on the show. I was, there was a thing. It was like, um, MTV, the show. It was like, uh, <laughs> that'd be a great game. <laughs> this, it was a post and it was like, uh, what, what players at what position are the clear cut best at their position? So obviously you had Lawrence Taylor, uh, Tom Brady, <clears throat> Jerry Rice, and then uh, I commented for tight end. I was like Tony Gonzalez, T Gons, yep, T -Gons Tony for G. Sure. Clearly, clearly the best tight end of all time, <laughs> like without a doubt, downvoted. Yeah, minus and this 12. guy, <clears throat> what is this guy? I gotta see what this guy said. Went to minus twelve. I, I just want to go back. I just want to go back to it because I want to get a little outraged again. Yeah. And um you went back to, you know, shutting the guy down. Yeah. I put a couple of them, dude. He started crying, I'm pretty sure. Guaranteed, guaranteed. This is just gonna this is just turning into a fucking stoke in the fire thing, but fuck it. Yeah, um <clears throat> I don't know how I would even find stuff like that on Instagram now. I'd have to go back to his post. <clears throat> but it's like Let's I, see, let's see. I just like don't understand why people get so fired up when they don't like something. That's all. It's like I don't even um, remember when this was. See, the thing that pissed me off with Reddit is that the format is so stupid. It tells you the amount of days ago it was instead of just telling you the date that it happened. So I said, um. Yeah, they should almost timestamp it with the time and the date. I don't see what that would hurt. This is, this is what it was. Was um, if I can find it here, uh, or at least posts should have that, like a date and time. <clears throat> okay, so it was um, <clears throat> uh, da -da 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 -da. I hear an da -da 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 -da. echo. Oh, it's probably your headphones going back into the microphone. Oh, probably, yeah. <clears throat> uh, the, actually, I had the post wrong. It said, uh, what current NFL star will have the biggest debate when it comes to the Hall of Fame? And uh, I didn't even comment an opinion for this. Somebody said um, he, he was naming guys that uh, it was all current players, and he left off uh, Jason Witten and Antonio Gates and J.J. Watt. So I said, you have to add those three people in. And then it turned into people attacking me because I said Jason Witten should be in the Hall of Fame, which is hilarious because he's going to be in the Hall. But I, I left a comment and I said, um, <clears throat> uh, in the end of the comment, I said, as far as Gates having a very strong case for the GOAT tight end, I don't agree. Gonzalez is clear cut above every other tight end that's ever played the game. Right. And then it was three that's days true. later, all of a sudden, this guy comments... You know, well, calling me a crackhead. Does he have a flair? He was a Chargers fan. Okay. He yeah, was a Chargers fan, which is amazing. 
Yeah. And um, it's, oh my God, the same thing happened. I'll let you finish this though. So this is what I said. He, he said, uh, I wish, and this is the thing too, is the guy went through my post history and found out that I live in Central New York because I post on the SU subreddit. <laughs> I love when they go to your <clears> post <throat> history right? and try and post So he's out. just like, man, I wish I could smoke that Syracuse meth that you guys get up there. <laughs> Okay. Okay, that makes no so sense. So do I, though. apparently, because I've never heard of Syracuse meth. So I told him, I go, I don't smoke meth. No need to be rude. I go, Gates didn't know how to block, which is pretty important for a tight end. And go on and on. I, I made a chart, and it was like, look at the QB's Gonzalez head. And then... Yeah, but don't put facts. Don't no, put that's facts what I did, on. is I put facts. No, you're not so it was, to do that. Uh, Gonzalez had 14 Pro Bowls, the most ever, to Gates' is eight. He had 10 all-pro selections to Gates' as five. Besides Matt Ryan, the only guy throwing Tony Gonzalez anything was Trent Green, Brody Croyle, Elvis Gerback, Tyler Thigpen, Damon Huard, and then an old Rich Gannon and an old Warren Moon. Yeah. Gates had two Hall of Famers, Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers. I guess F- Rivers can be a Hall of Famer. But this is what I, this is what I thought was the dagger, right? <clears throat> um... Gates only reached 80 or more catches in a season twice. Never broke 90. Gonzalez had 80 or more catches eight times, broke 90 five times, and broke 100 catches one time. But this is the big one. Gates only had more than 70 catches in a season six times. Mm -hmm. Gonzalez had less than 70 catches in a season three times. With one of those three seasons coming in a rookie year where he didn't even start a single game and he only missed 70 catches by five. It's all weird too. Cause and you it's, gotta... I think, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think what it comes down to is that you really know what kind of fan you're dealing with based on whether or not they could set aside their home team bias. Right. The fact that I can set aside my bias for Jason Witten. I already said Gates is better than Witten. Gonzalez is better than Witten. But Witten is still a Hall of Famer. That's what pissed everybody off. Well, people can't do that, whether it be sports or politics. Though. Oh, no, no. It's like I'm attacking his identity because I said that Antonio Gates isn't yeah. as good as Tony Gonzalez. He took offense to it, and he kept going. He kept messaging me. I had to block him. I watched. I was watching the Angels game the other day, and there was a big collision uh, at home plate. It was a 10 to 10, uh, 10 to 10 game. There was a fly ball out to right field and Calhoun bombed one back into the plate and it brought Luke Croy up the line trying to block, uh, like, uh, what's his name? The kid from the Astros, Jake, uh, Marichnik or something. And Marichnik basically like runs him the fuck over like mm-hmm. completely runs him over with like a shoulder barge and knocks out luke roy luke roy's got a concussion and a broken nose <clears throat> so he's out for a while luckily they have like a decent kevin smith's a decent catcher but they but the whole thing was the on the baseball subreddit everyone who was defending Marisnik had an Astros flair. Yep. So <clears throat> you knew that it was literally only coming from the perspective of their the, that team, they're the fans of that team. And I posted um like an Im- Imger fucking link of literally a, a shot for shot breakdown of how Luke Roy isn't blocking the base path and how uh Marishnik like takes literally takes a step inside the inside the infield because you're not supposed to as a base runner if you're heading home you're not supposed to deviate from your set course you're mm-hmm. supposed to go straight to the plate and most players they slide to the back end of the plate anyway and there's a clear path to the back of the plate and you can clearly see him step inside and move towards Lucroy and put his shoulder down and it's like I mean, there's a lot of people saying that he should be suspended for it and shit, but the whole argument for the Astros was he can't block the plate unless he has the ball, but there's images and angles that show that there's a clear path to the plate. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing, the entire thread was Astros fans like constantly defending him. It's like, sure, he might not be a notoriously dirty player, but he sure as fuck was trying to hit him and knock the ball out of his hands, like to try and make it look like he was blocking the plate. And you can't do that anymore since the Buster Posey uh, thing. Yeah. 
the Buster Posey rule is what it's called because there was that big collision at home plate with Posey where he like broke his fucking leg or something. He like bent backwards over his, his like, I don't know if it was an ankle or what. He like hyperextended his knee or something like that. Didn't and that, that change the career? rule? No, Who I don't think so. Am I thinking of Bumgarner? Uh, One of them. No. There was a Giants player that got in a, a bunch of injuries, right? I mean, back in the day, you could block the plate yeah. as a catcher. And the guy's goal, the base runner's goal, was just to hit you as hard as he could and knock the ball loose. As long as you held onto the ball as the catcher, he, you'd be called out. And they did call him out. They called uh, Marishnik out because mm-hmm. even though Luke Roy didn't catch the ball, they called him out because they said that he moved from his his path to the plate. So it was a fucking <coughs> crazy, and it was in a 10-10 to game. And it's like Angels Astros. It was a rubber match for the for the win, who to see who won the series basically. So it was a important game, and they they ended up winning, or the Astros ended up winning by one in like the night or maybe extras. I don't remember if it went to extras, but uh, I remember the fucking both subreddits, team subreddits were blowing up, and the fucking baseball sub was like just all Astros fans. They're talking about suspending him, too, or getting him fined or whatever. <clears throat> but it's like you wonder also how much of that backlash is because Luke Roy got a concussion and a bloody broken nose. You mm-hmm. know? But you can tell by the rule of the fucking – by the way the rule is written is how it should fucking be, be called. I think that's like the bottom line. And by the rule, he fucking stepped inside. It's like anytime you see that shit in the NFL, it's like you just have to go by how the rule's written, whether the rule's written well or not, you know? And that's hard to do because rules can't really define certain things in sports. It's like there are a lot of scenarios where things are so close, especially in baseball when things are just bang, bang, and it's real. There's a split second decision to be made. Umpires. I never understood why you'd want to be an umpire. You'd get you get your ass chewed out constantly. Oh my god, yeah. <clears throat> like every call you make is wrong, right? I think by the time you make it to be a major league umpire, though, you're so used you're pretty, to it, right? Yeah, you're used to it, and you also have a tendency. Certain umpires have a certain tendency, like home plate umpires. They'll be like, they'll they'll even tell you before the game. They'll be like, I have a high, my strike zone's a little high, like. I tend to call higher ball strikes. Yeah. Like, and some of them are not as approachable as others, too. Well, like, sometimes you can turn around and talk to the ump and be like, hey, like, should that, does that need to be lower? A lot of times the pitcher will ask the ump, like, was that too low? Or, like, where does it, where do I need to put it for it to be a strike? And some of them will answer you and be like, you know, get that thing, raise it a little bit. Or some of them just won't. Some of them are just assholes. I think um, a lot of people become umpires because don't you have to, <clears throat> at least in Little League, if you're an older Little League player, don't you also have to ump for the younger kids? Because yeah, I remember a I lot of guys I grew up do. with, they had to be umpires in order to be able to play or something. I think if you played for a couple years, yeah. I don't know if it's... But it's also good money for, I mean, I knew kids like uh, fucking Zach, Big yeah. Z. He would ump and he'd get, you know, 50 bucks to ump a game or yeah. two games or whatever. I would know. do it. That, a- yeah, as, as like a 15-year-old, 14-year-old kid. Hey, here's 50 bucks. Ump these Little League games for a day. Yeah. And then you spend it all on DP Doe. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, even doing like a softball game or something would be easy as shit. Yeah. You're not really calling balls and strikes anyway most of the time. It's no. fucking softball. You're just going to swing at everything. Because I remember for Taekwondo, we had to, uh, if if you uh, competed in a tournament, um, you had to also coach somebody. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if I was going to compete in a sparring match, I had to coach a lower belt in yeah. his fight. I, would I, just... I hated doing I hated it. Because I was so unorthodox that i couldn't tell the kids how to approach the fight 
because I was just like, yeah, just keep going in and get hit. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> just eat shots and keep coming yeah. forward. <laughs> throw a flying knee. Just run out and throw a flying knee. If um, only. Throw a spinning back kick to that. Hold left. <laughs> hold left bumper and press circle. <laughs> that's, that's the only tip I would give him, right? <clears throat> Or hold left bumper and press B, I guess, right? I just mixed two different controllers, basically. Right? Did we have... Did you make up some more uh, would-you-rathers? Because we did get a new suggestion. I don't think I did. We had a comment for more would-you-rathers. Oh, shit. Yep. From uh, The Love of Your Life, Miss oh. Katie. Uh, she said, share stories and do more of this or that, which I guess is the would-you-rathers. I don't have stories. Um, I don't have any stories right now. Uh, I st- I did see. Steve I have a story. We went to Dunkin' Donuts, and <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, I saw Schwalik yesterday. Oh yeah. Yep. He was at the hospital. Talked to him for a little bit. He says hi. He misses everybody. So I gave him a big hug. We all love him. Miss him too. Hopefully he's listening. Yeah. Got to share a Maybe lot of good. He- uh, I got to share a lot of good memories about Steve with one of my coworkers. Uh, one of them being, uh, Jesus, it had to have been like eight years ago now when I first started smoking pot. I've definitely shared this story before. I smoked <laughs> a bong for the first time, and I got so I, high. If we're talking about Steve. I have some stories about getting high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also have a story about how uh, he, he was the first one to teach me how to play guitar. He, uh, we were hanging out at uh, Wes's house, and I was like thirteen, <laughs> and I, I, uh, he was playing guitar, and I, he handed it to me, and he showed me uh, the basic chords. It was like a, it was G A E minor and D. Yeah, and then he taught me how to play "Wish You Were Here" in like an hour, which was really cool. But yeah, I've definitely shared that story about the baby back ribs before. <laughs> For yeah. sure. Everybody knows the baby back rib Everybody story. Everybody knows the baby back rib story. If you don't, then what are you doing here? Yeah. But you don't have any more would you rathers? Uh, I, I do, I think. Two All right. I think I had a, I had a couple. What did you say? I have two of them, but they're not that good. Uh, I had a couple times with Steve where I would... Uh, the, the, I just farted. It's going to smell really bad. Word. Um, just a heads up. <clears throat> um, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That one's savage. Holy shit. Yeah, that's just, uh, that one's only from, that's just pure coffee right there. That's pure coffee. Um, holy shit. (laughs) Is it turning green in here? I can't tell. It's turning green, I think. So anyway, (laughs) I'm hanging out with Steve at my old house. My parents were gone. He was like, dude, let's just smoke, right? Let's mm-hmm. just smoke weed. He's smoking, and we light up a bowl in my room. Uh, and he's like sticking his head out the window, like with a bowl, <laughs> lighting it mm-hmm. as my as my parents come pulling into the driveway. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> they totally knew, like immediately. Did you guys get <clears throat> busted? Yeah, for sure. Um, it's funny though, because. That, I mean, he, I also had a couple times with him where, like, there was one time I went down to the water with him and we smoked weed and I was completely roasted. Like, never been that high since then either. I think there was, it was fucking laced or something because I was fucked up. And, I mean, it was like pulse, like a pulsing that I was going through like it was literally like I was so high shit was literally pulsing around me and I remember just going home and just going straight upstairs Mm -hmm. (laughs) I was like I am fucking absolutely roasted never been that high before though it was insane I think that I don't know if they knew I mean I think they were completely gone too I was with a couple people that's like Steve uh it's funny because my parents now they just think Steve's like this weed guy, which he was. I know, and he hasn't. He's been sober for years now. Yeah, 
I mean, like, he was though at the time, right? I mean, but everybody was when we were when you were a teenager, right? Yeah, you know, I don't even smoke weed anymore. Yeah, yeah. so same. You know, um, <clears throat> yeah, a lot of good memories with all those people. <laughs> Let's do the would you rather. My back is really, really hurting. Yeah, but mine are, they're not that good, these ones are. They're not that good? They're not as good as the old ones we had? Uh, uh, <laughs> how did I get this one? Would you rather push, would you rather use a push lawnmower with a bar that's too high or too low? <laughs> oh my Cause, god because it's like the leverage thing right i would say you got to go with low because high is like you can't get the right you can't get the right leverage i with actually have a story one, about this we had a lawnmower i feel like the low one's bad for your back though we had a lawnmower where you could adjust the bar i think all lawnmowers can do that You're where you can adjust to, where yeah. the bar is the lawnmower that my dad and i had had for the past few years had the pin broken so it was constantly, <laughs> it was Just constantly it adjusting. I had and I'll bike. tell you, I'll tell you now, you want the low bar. Yeah, I think you so. want the low bar because the high bar, you have to like push your shoulder into it. Yeah. So it's like you're wrestling the lawnmower as you're mowing the yeah, lawn. I feel like you just have more control over it if it's down. Yeah. I had a bike that used to be like it had such loose handlebars on it, which is you could move them up and down. And all you had to do was like, Screw the thing in and tighten it with like yeah. a fucking literally a Phillips head screwdriver and never did it. I remember my friend, uh, Beefy actually, we brought it to his house and he was like doing a bunch of welding at the time and he just like welded it. Like he put it up like a Harley because <laughs> it was like the handlebars that went up like this and curved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he put it up like a Harley and just welded it in. <laughs> It was fucking great. And the seat was like, it was kind of boss looking, actually. It was like this purple bike with like a, like it had studded, like a studded seat on it and shit. I wonder what ever happened to that. That bike was fun to ride. You felt like a, you felt like a straight badass because no one had that. Like a Kylie Murray situation, you know, like a custom bike. Dude, <clears throat> I have some shit about that. It custom bikes oh okay. my god no about kylie <laughs> dude check off that uh check out that one. Oh, would you rather would you rather never hear music again or lose the ability to read lose the ability to read yeah um never hear music again yeah me too it just would reading really is pretty suck. important i think reading is very important right yeah i agree although now it's like you know you got all the general idea of things. So, you know, you know what street signs mean by the shapes and the colors. <laughs> you know how to drive. It's just, uh, you know, certain things you pretty much have to, you just have to be able to read. I just think it would suck to not hear music. I mean, you could hear anything else, right? It just says hear music, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's fucking hilarious. i don't know i'm like i'm getting like it just if it's classified as music you just can't hear it for some yeah like humming <laughs> you know if it has a rhythm yeah anything that has uh instrumentals um we should take a trip up to fulton sometime though and check it see if you know we can scout around is no the thing is is kylie has been spending every day at destiny mm. she lives in syracuse now you go to star she goes to starbucks Taco Bell every day. Baja Taco Blast. Bell. Oh, she does she post photos of the receipts? Yes. Yeah. And it's getting to the point where like you don't care how much an authority money. has to step in. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody has to step in because it's getting to the point where it needs to be neutralized in some way. <laughs> I think there's <laughs> like she no, talks it's about getting how much money like, she saves constantly. It's it's getting uh extremely concerning. Yeah. At least we're like correctly gendering yes i'm sure kylie is a good person yeah but this or not or you not know? we don't knows? i don't really know her we don't know um her facebook feed is seriously like the the most concerning thing i've seen like it's constantly <laughs> like the s- selfies 
no one's commenting. Rants. No, yeah, there's about no fast food. Uh, sh- pictures of job applications with all of our information leaked on them, yeah. like social security number, everything. Also fast food. Also fast food. But there was a picture of her riding her bike in the mall. So it's like, are you allowed to do that? I don't think you are. Yeah. I don't think you are. And I'm pretty sure you're allowed to have dogs in there and shit, aren't you? I actually have a funny story. I've about seen people. With I actually dogs have a funny story about that <laughs> about dogs in stores. This happened the other day. I went to Burn Dairy. Uh, How about just don't let dogs in places? You know? Yes. Do they need to be? There? It actually was the other day when we met up when we did the podcast with Bill. I was at Burn Dairy, and um, I bought the the Powerade and the Bang, and these two these two girls come in. Um, not that it matters, but they were both black. <laughs> and I mean, they, apparently it matters <laughs> because they because the situation what happened. The f- I keep seeing something hit the window. This is situ- there like a bird that keeps flying into the window? Or something? I think so. When I watch this back, I'm going to only watch the window. The situation played out exactly how I expected it to play out. <laughs> as soon as I saw these two girls come in, M- mind you, they're both fucking smoke shows, by the way, and they were dressed. To the nines or whatever. They were right. both really, really, really good looking girls. They had glow in the dark fish neck. Yeah, they did. Up. But she, one of them walked in with a, with like a dog on a leash. Right. And into burned airy. Okay. Well, and, at least it's on a leash. That's yeah. one good thing. And, um, the woman at the cash register is just like wicked polite. She goes, excuse me. Um, I'm not going to tell you to take your dog out of here, but take can you at least like here. carry your dog? Because you're not really supposed to have her in here, but at least carry it. Because it's a little tiny, like, fucking tiny thing. Does it say you can't have dogs? It does say you can't have dogs. I'd be like, for sure take your dog out of here. Yeah, it says no dogs allowed. And the girl looks over at the, the, uh, the woman at the register that I'm trying to fucking buy my shit from. She goes, really? That's funny, because I was here yesterday and somebody had their dog in here. And, uh, the woman goes, well, that... Person. Wow, that is funny. <laughs> the person, the the woman at Burnary goes, "Well, yeah, that I was here yesterday. It was a service dog. That guy was blind. Yeah, and so the girl goes, "Well, my dog's a service dog." She goes, "What Are service? You blind? What service does it provide?" And she goes, "Well, it's my dog." Oh, and she goes, "I would have asked her if she's blind because she didn't see the fucking <laughs> sign that says that there's no dogs allowed." But it was like, <laughs> I wish I could have that ratchet like holier than thou accent slash attitude right because even it's not just black girls but like a lot of people a lot of trashy people have that accent (laughs) you know what i'm you know what i mean like that trashy that ratchet accent like you could just tell like i saw those girls come in and i look at them and i'm like wow oh like the cute dog i wonder if it's a mode like if it's a mode that they switch into yeah i don't know man switch it's just disrespectful because no it's like they're being they were being polite it also makes you seem like an asshole and also an idiot yeah like it makes you seem stupid as fuck like it's it, just it like literally removes all intelligence it's like dude she asked you very nicely like you're not supposed yeah. to have dogs in here but can you at least pick the dog up basically so it doesn't like piss on shit it's not or, a service dog let's be honest no it's not it was a little fucking like maltese or something that was a and it's dude. just like dude what is up with this disregard for respect and authority within people are like our age and younger that also demand respect yeah it's like they are being as to the point and as kind as they can right because you're breaking a rule right you know what i mean <laughs> yeah there's a rule it's there just like reason. what the fuck you know um yeah and i'm sitting there and maybe she was blind though who knows? and you know, the the girl with the dog and the other friend, they're just, like, they're on the other side of Burned Area, like, yelling at the cashier. Right. Like, well, fuck you, I was here, and I want to speak to the manager, because I saw a dog here the other day, and the girl's like, I am the manager. I'm not asking you to leave, just please carry your dog so it doesn't, like, you know, contaminate the merchandise, because there's food here. We also sell, yeah, we sell food, hello. And then it's like, well... She goes, well, fuck that. I guess we're going to go somewhere else. And they leave. And it's okay. like, well, that problem solved itself. Right. Apparently, all you have to do to solve your problem is, to, is to be nice. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I wish it was Dave. I wish Dave was there instead. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, immediately, he's just like, okay, well, I'm not going to ask you to leave, but we sell food here, so yeah. pick that dog up. Actually, we <laughs> sell food here. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was just so stupid, and it's like, dude, why, why, why are you, why are you mad that you got caught breaking a rule? Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not being slick. You walk in with a dog at, like, 10 in the morning. Right. At least wear, like, like sunglasses or something and like a, have a cane or something like a stick like a feely stick you know i love that i love when people like get angry because they get caught breaking their break yeah i think they're like it's like watching cops and like people get caught on cops and they're like arguing with the police officer yeah it's like why are you arguing it's almost like they don't know what to do they're kind of surprised that they got caught basically yeah. like they're out they're backpedaling immediately and like I think that's like the defense, like to just to just argue. And I don't know, like I feel like most people just want to lie when they get caught, instead of just go, "Oh yeah, yeah, I did that actually." Uh, Zamaya had a suggestion. He said, "Talk about video games other than Madden," which okay. we talked about Bioshock earlier. So, yep, we win. We win. Good yep. job, Zamaya. <laughs> we beat him already. We yep. didn't even know. Um, um, not that it matters, but Zamaya's black. Yeah. So, you know, he should be happy that we're talking about Madden. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. I he doesn't like football. To... Oh. Well, that's weird. That's really stupid. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I always find it funny. Like, um, we we caught somebody stealing uh, the other day at the cafe, and I thought that was funny because it's like, that we saw the person, she walked in and grabbed like a bag of chips. How about don't steal, first yeah. of all. She walked in, she grabbed a bag of chips and a Mountain Dew and like a candy bar and just walked out with it. Yeah. So like when she came back, um, she tried to buy her, her meal, like her next meal. If you're going to steal, like at least go through the process of going through the drive through for getting your wallet and then going around into the drive, into the, the dining yeah, exactly. Area. At least like pretend it was an accident. Yeah. You know, and then it's just like, Hey, uh, did you come in and walk out with all that stuff earlier? And she's like, Oh yeah, I forgot to pay for it. It's like, yeah. you don't forget to pay for it. Yeah. You yeah. just didn't pay for it. Right. <laughs> like, oh my bad. Forgot. <laughs> like if, if you, if you came back and was like, Hey, I accidentally grabbed all this shit and walked out with it. Then it would be one thing, but you you walked in, grabbed it all, and like were looking over your shoulder as you were walking yeah. out. It's funny because like if you're gonna steal, stop looking like you're stealing, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like how about just put it in your pocket and walk away? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when I was younger, I used to just grab little things sometimes. If it's a little thing, you know, like if it's a candy bar or something, you just put it in your pocket act like you don't have anything in your pocket instead of looking around and like checking to see if anybody sees you and nowadays it's like you can't even do that shit though because there's cameras but it's like if they don't know that that shit was stolen there's no reason for them to check the cameras right like, right it's like unless it's something big that you're stealing it doesn't really matter but it's like i don't know dude there's some stores now that uh like they sort of, I don't know how they do it, but it goes, it's all done on your phone. Like you can just walk in and grab the shit. And then as you walk out, it charges your phone, like the amount of money to your phone. There's certain like experimental stores that are doing yeah. that. Which no, is crazy. I don't like that at all. How does that even work though? I don't like that at all. You'd almost have to have an app of some sort. Yeah. I, I really don't know how that works. I should look into that. Cause that's fucking crazy. Cause then there's even there's not even a self checkout. Then it's just you're leaving with shit. You basically feel like you're shoplifting every time you go in there. <laughs> shoplifting is gonna be the normal. <laughs> you get charged even if you steal shit. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking funny though. It's fucking just. I wonder if that's NFC chip. Uh, compatibility <clears throat> probably i used to i stole stuff from walmart it's easy yeah. to do that pizzas mostly <laughs> right yeah how do you wait you steal pizzas from yeah. walmart yeah 
<laughs> Those are big objects. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the bigger the object, the harder, the higher the, the difficulty. I think the funniest level. one was when I accidentally walked out with like a 12 pack of Guinness in the bottles without like even. Right. Because I bought like. What if you just bring your own Walmart bag, right? And then you take all the bottles out of the box, which has the scanning thing on it. And then you put all the bottles in the bag. And then you just walk out because no. it looks like you're. No, that doesn't work like that. Why, why, why go through the process of taking the bottles out of the box when you can just put the box in the bag and walk out with the bag with the box inside the bag? Because well, the box has, doesn't it have like a something that picks up when you walk Apparently through? not. Really? Because what happened basically was I went to Walmart with um, one of my buddies and we, were, we, bu- we each bought like a ton of shit. Like I bought a bunch of food, uh, mostly food, bought yeah. like food munchies. And then a 12-pack of Guinness. And then you didn't buy a bunch of shit. <laughs> and then we were checking out, and we went to the self-checkout. And the guy running the self-checkout is a guy that I went to high school with. And we were talking, and I was ringing my stuff up and handing it to him, and he was putting it in the bags for me. And then, like, I handed him the 12-pack of Guinness, and he put that in the bag for me. And then I walked out. Yeah. And it was, like, the Guinness and, like... A thing of Hot Pockets, like, I just was handing to him. Like, halfway through when I realized he was just putting, Uh, he was bagging all my stuff for me, I just kept handing him the rest of the stuff that I was gonna buy. (laughs) Yeah. But, you know, at least I didn't have a dog That always was confusing to me, like, that self-checkout. There's one guy watching it, and when there's a bunch of people doing that, that self-checkout shit, you wonder how many people just aren't scanning things and just put them in the bag. Right. (laughs) Because you can. I mean, their only thing is, like, how are they going to watch all of them? They, they can't do that. They have cameras, I think. They have cameras right on them, yeah. Yeah. But, again, it's like, unless they know you stole something, they, they're they not going to check the cameras. And so the whole thing's fucking weird. It's like, how about just have people check you out, you know? It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, like, aren't you Especially paying- with Walmart, <clears throat> considering how much money they have. It's not like they are fucking sh- like short on cash and can't afford to pay their employees, right? <laughs> like Walmart is gigantic. It's funny, cause, like Walmart almost could have done an Amazon thing, which they kind of do now, where you can go on their app or their website or whatever and order things to your house. You can also order things. I do this sometimes, where you can order a uh, item to your store. And then go pick it up for free. So you don't have to pay for shipping. You just go grab it at Walmart. Yeah. Which That's is That's the nice. one where they drop off the shit right to your car, right? They Well, they can, yeah. But there's a pickup thing in the back, like near the electronics section. Mm-hmm. So you can get things sent to the store. You just go. You just give them like your name or whatever. And they give you the... It's basically them shipping it for free to the store instead of shipping it to your house. Mm-hmm. Which big deal you have to drive to walmart so what i've done it a bunch of times because you get things for relatively cheap i think i've done it for some equipment for this actually i did that with my tv uh my tv i picked up from walmart yeah well there's certain things at the store that they don't have so if you can find it on their website you can just get them to to send it to the store Mm -hmm. sometimes you get things that like it says are in the store and they're not. <laughs> That's the most annoying. <laughs> it's really annoying. It's probably because people are stealing them. Yeah. <laughs> so well, it's not that, registered. That on was the website. one where, like, yeah, right? That happened with uh, my the stand for my TV where um, it said that the TV and the stand were both delivered on like a Thursday. We went and picked it up on a Friday and then we get there and they're like, oh, yeah, the, the stand actually isn't in. It's like, well, oh, what yeah. happened to it? They're like, well, yeah, it's not going to be here till Monday. Like, well, then why did you tell me it was here? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, how about don't do that, right? Uh. Yeah. It's fucked up. Anyway, we got free Duncan. So we did. Shout out to Duncan. Also, um, thank you to everybody who's been listening to the podcast this last week. It's been fucking crazy. It has been. We had a, a quite a big boost on PodCoin, which was pretty awesome. Yeah, we were up there on the homepage for probably half the weekend, at least. I would yeah, say. I mean, we were number one for a whole 
two days, I think. Yeah. So it was cool seeing like a bunch of people finally, uh, you know, like kind of flooding in. Basically, it was weird. Yeah, and hopefully, you I know. was watching. I opened the app, uh, our Anchor app, because we use Anchor. Shout out to Anchor, their sponsor. Anchor. Uh, we, I opened the app and I, I saw that there was a whole bunch of fucking extra plays. And so every like hour or so I would like check it and it was just skyrocketing. I was like literally watching the plays go up. So I was like, Oh Jesus Christ, what's going on? So I checked Podcoin and I was like, Oh shit, we're like on the front page. Yeah. So people are like <clears throat> listening to that. And what's cool is if you're on that app, you're getting double like credits for listening to this show. Mm-hmm. So that's are we cool. still up there or no? We're probably in the bonus podcast page still, but not on the front page. I would imagine. <clears throat> I think you'd have to go to like bonus podcasts or like bonus episodes view all. But uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool. I hope people are. Uh, yeah, we're still on around. bonus. We're on uh, the second page of the bonus, which is pretty dope. Yeah. Um, I'm but really you, digging the format we're doing now where we do one episode with a guest and one episode without a guest. I was thinking about just constantly doing that. Yeah. Right? I feel like it flows pretty well. Yeah. That way we're not scrambling to get people, especially cause that gives us basically two weeks. Right. And it also spaces out our guests a little bit more. Mm-hmm. We should make a list of guests that we want to get on. Cause I, we definitely have some and we haven't made it a priority to really talk to them. I think. Yeah. We definitely need Aaron back. Yeah. Aaron wanted to be back. Um, we haven't had Brian on in a while. Yeah, that's true. I, um, talk, I want to talk to Dave again too. Dave would be fun. Uh, uh, Jesse, Josh, Swamp—they all want to be back on, right? Uh, yeah. What's really? Thinking? That's about it. I mean, everybody else. I mean, we have Bill on once a month. I think feels yeah. like it. Yeah. Well, we gotta get Dom back. wants to be back. <laughs> Dom <laughs> Dom wants to put a vacation day in so he can get hammered with us. Oh yeah. I don't, it's like, I almost want to have like a certain number of episodes between a guest's like appearance. You know? Yeah, except for Bill. Right, Bill can come Bill can be on every episode. Yeah. We actually, we it's had funny, somebody, we, were, we, were we had someone about, request uh, that. Yeah. Yeah, we actually did. <laughs> <laughs> we had someone it's, request we, that we Bill becomes about, the permanent uh, guest. We were joking about how this episode with Bill is skyrocketing because it's all Bill. Yeah. Like, he's just going to break off and, like, leave us in the dust and do a solo project, basically. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to have a Bill Has Bars podcast. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Vinny wants to be back. That's the other one. Yeah. Oh, well, who cares? It's Vinny. <laughs> right. <laughs> leave him in the dust. <laughs> um... <laughs> But yeah, a lot of the people, I mean, we had Brian Vinny on was, January. Vinny was fucking hilarious the other night because he was like on oh zero God. hours of sleep yeah. for like I really hours. wish we could have recorded that because for those of you that don't know, Vinny works an extremely high intense, like high intensity job. <laughs> and he had to work like a 32 hour shift the other day. He, we get here. I worked 15 hours. He worked 32 yeah, we're we, gonna stay up till we're gonna stay up watching UFC. Till yeah, like one. we got here at what, like nine o'clock, and um, I have been we've been friends with Vinny for years. I've never seen him more fucked up than that <laughs> night, and it was just on sleep deprivation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I wish we wrote down the shit he was saying because I forgot completely. Yeah, I, it wasn't even like coherent no. processes. Um. <laughs> Yeah, the good. only way, the only thing I had written down, and he's he said, I love the way Irish accented people break out into them at whenever they see them out. Sometimes whenever they talk in Irish, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he's got a good point though. I think he does. I do really like when if Irish look, people break out in Irish. Yeah, <laughs> if you look deep into that, he's got a point. I think deep down, all the things he was saying had points. It's just the way he conveyed them. That's that was the real issue, right? Vinny's pretty good at not conveying things correctly, though, you know? Definitely. Definitely a champ at it. <laughs> <laughs> the not conveying champ. The conveying champ. I guess Segura's doing a new podcast with uh, Burt Kreischer. Two Bears, One Cave. Yeah. Uh, I was okay. It's all right, yeah. I think it's funny that he has that chick that, like, comes in and serves him, like, food and shit. Yeah. <laughs> he drinks. <laughs> If they do it like once a month, that's a cool idea. I think I, I, I already listened to too much. So, 
you know, when there's a new podcast that I want to check out, it's like, I can't like, there's just too much I'm listening to at the moment. It's like, if I listen to everything as it comes out throughout the week, I have nothing to listen to on the weekend, which is good. Cause then I get to listen to music and shit, mm-hmm. but I have enough shows to carry me through the entire week right now. As far as podcasts go between like Rogan, who does, you know, up to five episodes a week and Bill Burr, who does two. It's like Fighter and the Kid does three. King and the Sting does one. Your Mom's House does one. It's like there's a lot of fucking episodes. So I listen to all of them every week, and then by, <clears throat> by Friday, I'm pretty much done with all of them. It's like some people, man, it's like if you work in a cubicle or something, or you're a janitor, or you have somewhere where you can just listen to shows, you know, maybe you're doing that right now. It's like that's a prime fucking spot for podcasts. That's what Zamaya does. Yeah. Zamaya, I used to do it all Zamaya, the time. Zamaya uh, works at his I used job to do it at the just... plant because it's 10 hours where you're just walking around doing basic cleaning shit and it's kind of mindless work. And so you can listen to, and that's when I like started listening to, that's when I basically discovered all the shows I listened to. Yeah. Because I was started listening to like UFC Unleashed or whatever, or UFC, uh, what's it called? Unfiltered, Jim Norton and Matt Sarah. <laughs> yep. It's like I started listening to shows I normally wouldn't listen to, and that's, you know, even like uh, Joey Diaz podcast, I don't listen to that too much anymore, but like all those shows, I basically download 10 hours worth of podcasts and just let it play. Mm-hmm. It passes the time way faster, that's for sure, because you got something taking your mind off of it. It's like if I was working like an assembly line or something where you're just constantly doing the same thing, I'd want to be able to do that. But you'd almost have to, they probably don't let you do that in those places. No. Around heavy machinery. Uh, At Novellus, you weren't even allowed to have your phone on you. Mm, Yeah. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, uh, yeah. You want as little distraction as possible. I feel like people are getting hurt from that shit. People getting hurt badly. Yeah, kids getting hurt badly. I love when people call people kids, right? Even though they're not kids. Like, especially in sports. Like, I'll do it. I'll be like, yeah, this kid's pretty good. Like, it's like the dude's 37. (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, this kid's fucking good, dude. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah. (laughs) It's not Vlad Guerrero Jr. who's 20 and just fucking almost won a home run derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Fucking A. That's crazy, man. 20 years old, fucking playing in Major League Baseball. It's like, I get it. There's a lot of kids that are young. And I said it right there. Kids that are young. Uh, playing baseball, though, it's like, if you're good enough, you can get into the majors when you're young. And that's a big stage. Even Trout was kind of young when he came into the league. Yeah. Oh, uh, so my friend Chase says we should talk about him. Chase Chase Utley? Um, Chase I don't know that many Chases I know a few Chase is such a white guy name dude It's funny because the first person I ever met Named Chase was a black guy At the oh Didn't you talk about this the other Yeah he lived next door to me Yeah at college And he was a wicked ridiculous basketball player yeah, He's also a I rapper. thought for sure he was going to be white Like yeah. there's no way that Chase, yeah, no, I, Chase like I always feel like it's a white dude With blonde hair and it's spiked Spiked blonde It's because hair. of Zoe 101, dude. Was there a guy named Chase? In that? Yep. Huh. Was he? Did he have blonde hair and spiked? I don't think it was blonde, no. Hmm. That definitely seems like a Chase type thing, though. You know, like a Bryce. Hey, know. Bryce. I wonder if there is a black guy named Bryce. I would imagine, yeah. That seems like a pretty good, like, uh, that can go either way. I think it skews it skews white. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah, it's a cool name though, right? It's got a Y in it. Any any name with an X or a Y in it is pretty cool. Um, Although, like sometimes they just throw X's in names just to have an X in them. Like I love when people just change the spelling of names just to be like, yeah, he's an individual. Like he. <laughs> It's like, that's not how it works. You still have that name. 
No one knows that it's spelled that way except for you and people that yeah. have seen you write it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I when Brian Callen. It's like B R Y A N. It's like why you don't need a Y. It's like My mom's name is Kim, but it's with a C. <laughs> yeah, which is funny what? because now when I see Kim with a K, I'm like, it you're looks wrong. weird. Yeah, yeah. Like you're doing it wrong. It's just not right. Yeah, but not but with a C, it's like you know you're an individual. You're a different person. <laughs> Whenever I see someone with a normal name spelt differently, I immediately think they're ethnic. Yeah. You should I immediately your name think that they're J-A-Y. like a person of color. J A Y K E. That would be sick. That was disgusting. Don't yeah, ever say but that. But you'd be different than everybody else. J A Y Q E. That's getting into black territory, though. <laughs> if it's got a Q. J A Y Q. Yo, yeah. That's. I never thought about that. Like, what? A lot of people, like, if you're, if there's a Q in your name, you're probably African American, right? You can say black. Well, I'm, that's the same thing, but I'm just saying <laughs> African American. Well, it's like, no, this is the thing, because, like, all of my black friends prefer black. Black? Really? Nobody likes to be called African American. I was thinking that the other day, too. Like, why? I feel like they don't actually prefer African American. It's not like we care if people call us. Not black. that I'm speaking for my black friends, but right, right. they prefer saying. black. Yeah, like I don't give a shit if people call. I also don't feel like most people call white people Caucasians. No, so it's kind of the same thing, right? Like, why do we have white? Why? Why is white people white? But then every other is. A specific wrong. thing. Yeah. Or you're not allowed to say all the other ones, apparently. You can't say black. You can say brown, <laughs> yellow, whatever, red. That's true. Because black and white are shades. They should be fine. You know, they're just shades. Yellow and, and red are colors. So I guess that's a little bit more offensive. <laughs> <laughs> colors are more offensive than shades, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> Yeah, you can't have the red skins, dude. It's red. You can't have colors. It all depends on the hue. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I guess. The tint. Yeah. <laughs> Saturation. <laughs> yeah. I'm a tinted American. <laughs> I'm a saturated American. <laughs> Oh shit! I gotta go home soon. I'm just getting exhausted, man. I'm on. I'm not even. You should go to Dunkin' get another free coffee. We should go to Dunkin' get another free coffee. <laughs> if we just get a sponsorship from them, we'll always get free coffee. Let's just do that. Now that we're getting v- actual listens, right? Maybe they'll maybe they'll want to get us to read an ad for them. I would like to talk to some local businesses and see if they want us to do something like that. That'd be cool. Get a get pizza villa. Maybe we get a free pizza. You know. I would like some villa, man. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, except for when they put the cheese or when they put the toppings under the cheese. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess we'll wrap. I'm we'll done. Wrap I'm done. This I'm, up. Done. Yeah, I'm so, done. Well, you know. Sometimes you want the toppings on top of Sometimes the Sometimes you should just eat the pizza. Yeah, well, you're going to eat it. It's just you don't want the sauce getting ruined by the toppings. You know what I mean? I actually got in an argument with somebody about Pizza Villa the other day, and they were basically saying that the only reason... Oh, it was fucking Aaron. The only reason, <laughs> the only reason Pizza Villa is around is because of old people. And it's like, no, Pizza Villa is the best fucking pizza in the city... I think we it was here, wasn't it? It was here, yeah. It yeah. was after. There's a no, oh my god! I posted on Instagram um, <laughs> after you were bringing up a bunch of people with like disabilities on YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> and Aaron was like freaking out. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, "What the fuck was that?" <laughs> you were like, "It was in the queue." It was in the queue, dude. <laughs> we watched those videos, and I added like. I added like 11 videos to the queue. We watched all 11 of them and then it went right back to fucking special people with special stories or whatever yeah. it was called. The boy without eyes. <laughs> fucking what? <laughs> yeah, well, we were watching the Lego Star Wars. We were video. watching CEO 100 Abel. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that's an Instagram plug for you right there. 
check out our Instagram because we have we post like a, all of our clips on there and like a sh- shortened versions, sort of more compact, and they get to the punches. It's pretty cool. I almost wish that our YouTube videos. I, I almost want to edit the YouTube videos a little bit and make them a little bit quicker. Right. I don't um, know. I don't know. I like the idea. Sometimes I like the long clips. Because people don't like to listen to three-hour podcasts. So no. at least it gets them in like, oh, they go, they go, oh, it's it's only, you know, six minutes. I can, I can manage that. So I think that's the hardest part, really, about doing these things is getting people to fucking watch. Mm-hmm. And getting some sort of promotion, you know. But anyway, shout out to Podcoin because they've been pretty helpful as far as that goes. And uh, they haven't paid us anything, but they're giving, paying us in uh, exposure. You know? Yeah, I love when I get paid in exposure. Yeah. All oh, anchors. You know, if only... I swear the health would make so much more money if they just paid us in exposure. Yeah. Yeah, you should get. You should ask if you can get paid in exposure. They just start showing you their dicks and <laughs> shit like that. They just start showing you fucking private. Yeah, it's like you want this fucking sandwich. Show me your tits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, we'll see you next week. We should have a guest for you, and uh, I don't know. We should come up with a catchphrase, like an over and out. Don't give them clear shots. ClearShotsPodcast.com is where you'll find links to everything we do. You can check us out on Twitter at ClearShotsPod. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and check us out on Periscope for live videos. If you have anything you want to ask us, send us an email at ClearShotsPodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. We will see you next time.